All right. We've got a great, uh, I, I wanted to call him the Grand Admiral. Wait, no, Grand Marshal of Propaganda. That's what I referred to you as last night. You did. Last- you did. You're actually the Grand Admiral of Propaganda. Right, right. Then there's some there's some history behind all my nicknames anyway. So I know you've given a few already. So this is a retired Sergeant Major from the United States Army, the United States Army, Kenneth Ramos. At least 29 years, did a lot of great things. We overlapped, it looks like, in Iraq at one point. So hopefully we did. We did. That. First Armored um, Division, probably, I think. And yeah. uh, and then Operation, uh, well, actually, the invasion, too, so. Yeah. So you did. Yeah. You were, you were there doing a lot of good stuff. Uh, and then you went on to serve in Africa as well. Ultimately finishing up at the John F. Kennedy special warfare center in school with the psychological operations commandant's office. That's right. Yeah. Good was, word. Lots of words in that was, title. That's very like a, army. Like a projects guy. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> All right. So that's awesome. He did a lot of good things. Uh, Before we get into him and why uh, he's here and all the good stuff he does, we're going to first talk about what will be fueling this discussion. And he will actually be imbibing in the exact same product tonight. A little Buffalo Trace. There's his. All right. Yeah. His bottle is much more full than mine. So this is a this is a single barrel pick from uh, the Rockland bottle shop. So if you're in California and you're in Rockland, they may or may not have some more of these left, but well, a little bit different than your standard Buffalo Trace, obviously single barrel. Uh, Buffalo Trace, for the most part, is a blend of a bunch of barrels, but usually between eight, ten years old. This one is eight years and nine months, I think it was, yep. something like that. So not bad at all. Stuff. Yeah, no, nah, you can't do bad. You know, uh, the distillery itself has gotten so much hype and it's, it's well deserved. But the, the aftermarket prices on their antique collection and some of their other stuff is just absolutely insane. But if you just want to spend 20 to 30 bucks on a good bottle of bourbon, can't beat it. No, you can't. You can't. You cannot. I mean, you can try. I mean, well, I mean, depending where you're at, too, because yeah, some, some of it's taxes and, and a little bit of markup, too, I guess, with all the supply chain issues we've had. All yeah, that. well, there's that. But the, what's kind of the weirdest thing to me, and I still love, it's like probably one of my favorite things about the state of California is that liquor, for the most part, really isn't that expensive. And it's everywhere. It's a- it isn't. Uh, the fr- I actually, to be honest with you, the further out west you go, the actual it's actually cheaper than it is out in the east. Yeah. So a lot of out east, they have a lot of the uh, state controlled stores and all that. Kind ABC of stores and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, yeah. I remember growing up in Florida with ABC stores, and I just thought it was where all the, the homeless and the drug addicts hung out at. Yeah. At least in front, they did. I don't know what it looks like now. It's been forever. <laughs> so they probably cleaned it up. So <laughs> now it probably just looks like San Francisco. Probably. Yeah. 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 All right. So hey, how'd you? Uh, How'd you find yourself in the, uh, the, the great United States army once upon a time? What happened? Oh man. Well, um, we can, we could go back further, 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 uh, to, to the year 1987 or something like that. Okay. Um, I always grew up watching John Wayne movies and, you know, anything that had to do with world war two, anything that had to do with, uh, you know, uh, you know, Clark Gable was one of the, you know, it was like, kind of like, you know, bouncing off a of freaking Lafayette Lee's freaking, you know, yeah. I'm like, dude, how it, it, you know, those, those type of old Jimmy Stewart films, anything that had to do with, the, you know, Audie Murphy, any of those old school stands at Iwo Jima. And I was always fascinated with the military and, and me being uh, an immigrant or the family of an immigrant. Uh, it was, it was kind of like one of those things to just kind of like serve. It was not like a calling, you know what I mean? It's, um, it kind of got more me. like, did you, did you feel it was more like, you kind of owed it to your new country or maybe well, an obligation that you felt that it, it was always service in my family. Yeah. Um, it was always, it was always there. It was right. all, dating all the way back. I mean, we can, we all the way back to the Mexican revolution. I've, I've had family members back that far. Um, and, and it was always one of those things that, you know, it was a calling to serve. It was, it's almost like you can't describe where it's coming from, or you can't describe, I guess that you can't describe it. It's just a calling. And, um, so my dad being a Vietnam vet, oh, okay. um, you know, he was, yeah. uh, he was, as a matter of fact, the movie platoon was based on some of the, some of the units that were in Vietnam, that my dad was in uh, some of the, a lot of history with the 25th ID and the yeah. Fourth infantry division and stuff like that. So it was kind of like, my dad was like seeing the, the Vietnam side of the army. He was seeing right. the, he was seeing the WTF side of the army. You know what I mean? <laughs> he was like, dude, this look, um, you're not going to be a grunt. I'm going to tell you that right now. You're, you're going to go into where you're, I mean, he wanted what was best for me. Yeah. He even said, Hey, don't, don't, um, 
maybe you should go in like in the guard or the reserve to kind of see what it's like to sign right. kind of, you kind of like a, te- a test. And, um, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a good student, you know, I'll admit that right now. Uh, and, and it was one of those things to where, at the time, there was only specific individuals that could come in to the military with what I had. Um, I mean, I graduated high school, but I didn't graduate normally. I mean, I, I'll admit it right now, and this is the first breaking news thing you probably you're gonna you're gonna hear on. There will be Berman <laughs> right now. Um, what we do here, we break news. I you mean, guys, are, yeah, break news. Kind and, of a big deal. Yeah, and uh, I don't have a high school education, but I have a GED. Ah, good and enough, so, right? Good yeah. Enough. So, so, but at the time. You know, it, it was one of those things to where, you know, I had some family, I don't want to say family issues or family drama. It was more like you had to take care of the family. You had to do things. To yeah. You, you had other things keeping you from going to school. It, 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 I it, see it all the time. Actually. So, yeah. yeah. I'm, and I'm, so, it was, well, especially out West because, yeah, yep. you went know, Army in California. Yeah. And um, so with that, I, uh, you know, my dad's like, okay, well, here's, here's what you're kind of looking at. And again, this is, this is breaking news. Not nobody knows about this, but you. And then, of course, some of my, some of my friends that, you know, joke around with me collecting, you know, degrees and diplomas, like I collect wives. So it's one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, it is. Is. there it is. So, <laughs> so my dad said like, Hey, you know, this is something that you want to do. And I, I'm like, I really want to do it. And he's like, well, test this out, go in, an AB, in the aviation world. And then you'll, 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 you'll see what happens. And, and, yep. uh, you know, of course, you know, the crew recruiter was like, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. And yeah, you'll fly around in helicopters. Hey, maybe you'll be like a crew chief or something like that. I'm like, really? So I was like, can I really do that? And it was like 50, it was at the time, 93 Papa. And it's, it's now 15 Papa. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, yeah, come on in. You could, you could do it. So I, I joined, I joined the guard, Cal guard. And then uh, did all my stuff. And then, you know, I mean, I mean, a childhood friend of mine, uh, we had grown up together. We were, we were the, we were the friends that you saw on any 80s coming of age teenage movie where bros hang out and do bro things. You know what I mean? We're, we're going to fuck the, fuck the man. We're going to go out and do this. And <laughs> we're going to ride motorcycles across the country and shit. And just, you know, just dudes shit, you know? And um, so he's like, Hey, you know, move out to Arizona. So we moved out to Arizona and uh, I worked at an, and big farm at the time. Hmm. And, uh, and so I, I did that. And then, uh, there was an, uh, an AGR position, uh, active guard, ADOS orders to, to participate in what was called the JC, the JC uh, NTF, which was a joint counter narcotics tax force that supports JTF six out in Yuma. Okay. And I was like, you know, here's, here's private, you know, he's private Ramos. Well, well, what's this? What's this? And some friends are like, yeah, dude said all these former, uh, you know, obviously uh, out, out West, all these former, um, you know, not former, they were, they were, combat infantrymen sf guys uh calf scouts yes i'll, I'll even throw a shout out to calf um you shouldn't but, it's okay. <laughs> but but they were the ones that got me into the into the spirit of of foot patrols yeah uh, means to to set up a, like a you know one, you know because the guard has everybody in there mind you now we're talking about the 90s we yeah. still had guys in the guard that were still vietnam vets I know. Yeah. And, and for them they, this was like their big hurrah to do alert patrols you know, out in, out in the desert, out in the Yuma sector of the border patrol. I even got a little certificate for operation white dove back in the day. Nice. And, um, it was, it was the same border mission kind of like we have now. Well, not so fucked yeah. up, but it was a little bit more, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was a little bit more purpose. It was, driven, it was, yeah. It was purpose driven. You know, they, they sent you, yeah, they sent you to a small uh-huh. course. Uh, once you got pulled into their realm, uh, and, and you, you made the, the cut, I guess you'd say you had to do what was called a counter drug counter counter drug ground task force of course, which is done at a uh, Kirtland Air Force Base. And it was, you know, SF dudes, they're, they're, they're training. They're basically, it was almost like Robin Sage, but for us, you know what I mean? It was like, how do you get guys and, and, and this guys, this was back before all these, you know, changes and in, in policies of who's fights what or whatever, is how do we get all these group of guys together that are come from different backgrounds and we teach them how to do blurps, how we teach them how to do any of those types of operations. So they set up this course at Kirtland Air Force Base. And it's basically, it was basically like, if you, if I were to look back now with a different type of lens, it, it would be like a SRT slash mini SWAT slash uh, Department of Energy, you know, a tech export, uh, escort thing that, that, that I would never have thought I would ever do as an aviation guy. Mm-hmm. So I did a couple of missions with them and I'm like, holy shit, this is awesome. I want to do this. Matter of fact, if this is what active duty is all about, then uh, I'm, I'm in, I'm sold. Talk to my dad about it. And he's like, all right, well, you know, 
all right, that's what you want. That's what you want. Go ahead, go for it. But you understand that when you're coming off these ADOS order, you come off these orders, you're not coming up. You're not, you're going to come off to do your MOS and the reserves and you can't change your MOS, right? Yep. Off bat. You're not going to be like a Cav Scout or infantry or SF Rangers. They all have selections that they have to go to. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I go after duty. And so March 10th, 1993, I report to Fort Hood, Texas, ready to do the same soldier stuff that I did in that, in that mission. Nah, nah, I'm base operations, no. fucking flat ops. Uh, <laughs> it's like this, this is it. And they're like, oh, you can't. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, you can't, re you can't reclass if you want. You, you can go to Ranger School, but, but then you could like go to 160th Green Platoon. But you're, you're, you're done. You're, you're happy. Hi, you, you suck. You suck. And I'm like, God damn. So, so about ten years go by, and I was assigned to, you know, I mean, I wasn't assigned to bad units. I was assigned to, you know, I was assigned to Fort Hood. Uh, and then PCS to uh, Germany. I uh, was assigned to the 12th, uh, at the time it was the 12th Aviation Brigade, not the 12th Combat Aviation Brigade. And did that, did a bunch of little side things for them. I mean, you know, with the Balkans kicking off in 95, my unit also had what was called the Beirut Air Bridge, which was a unique mission for the State Department that would fly out of Cyprus to the embassy in Lebanon. And it, it was it was one of those things to where it was almost like a sort of pseudo soft, like maybe kind of event that I was kind of like, okay, well, you know, we can support that and all that. That's, that's, that's cool. Um, and then uh, it was a Balkans that kicked off. It was task force Hawk and Tirana, Albania. And the, when my unit had some mechanical issues that needed somebody from central region, which is what they called if you were stationed in Germany and you did stuff in Europe, they need somebody to go and uh, do a, a singleton mission just to go fly. Hey, you need to be a pallet rider to take this big part for an air traffic control piece of equipment. I'm like, okay, well, where do I got to go? Well, here's a phone number. You know, back in the day, we didn't have cell phones or like this technology we have now. We just had to call them up and say, hey, call this number. Yeah, tell it exactly them. Like, worked back though. Because yeah, 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 you just had to do them. You just had you you to wait for an email. You just went and did stuff. Exactly. And, and so my, my chain of commands, like, here you go, here's the part you have to sign for it. And I am on a property book. So here, this is not a sensitive item, but it is a sensitive item. This is air traffic equipment. So you got to go. All right, cool. And everyone was like, man, you know, this, this is when the shit that was going on in, in, uh, you know, Albania task force Hawk, the race to Pristina airport, you know, all that big stuff that was happening back in the day with operation ally, uh, just a bunch of, I was just like, God, this is, the, the aviation side of my, of my chain of command was you're, you're freaking nuts. If you're going to go down there by yourself and yeah. they had that, it was still that because of after desert storm, everyone had that, you know, that, that kind of secured mentality where you're always going to be near to me. This is the shit that I wanted to do. This is one of those, ah, man, this is singleton. I was going to say, so <clears throat> let me back up real quick. So we, you guys said you brought up desert storm so i guess being in the reserves did you have like there was no possibility that you guys were going to take part in that uh for desert storm actually we were alerted at the time that it was kicking off and it was uh it was by the time it was our road our our reserve units chance yeah. to go it was already it was literally done. Desert, it, yeah it was, that's awful that's it, it, it was it was, was kind of like uh and i'm you know, i'm glad you brought that out i was telling my dad i was all buttered about him yeah. well yeah you should be yeah. Yeah, everyone would be i think at that point once once you've been in long enough and you see your buddies or you see something going on and you get a chance to, to actually perform your wartime mission and you don't get a chance to do it yeah of course you should yeah, yeah. be left it, out Every soldier should feel that way. That's the should. thing. They should, should, yeah. <laughs> Keep fucking words. It should. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so I, um, so I, I did. Uh, you know, I, I'm glad you brought that up because that, that I, I, I remember me and a couple, a couple other uh, uh, flat out specialists were like, man, we, we want to go Desert Storm, blah blah blah, and, and they're like, you're gonna go. We're going as a unit, so you're, you don't, don't worry about it. We're gonna go. And then literally after the ground war finished, it was like not even hundred hours, and it was like all these units were getting called off, and and they were like, okay, now we're going to NTC or some shit like that. <laughs> and so, so it was, yeah. So it was, it wasn't too bad. So, so going back to the, to the, to the, to the, to the part. Yeah, my, we my, my friends always call it. You were on that part mission, and so I had to go to task force. I had to go find this air traffic control unit that was moving forward from Tirana, Air, uh, Albania to Camp Bonsteel through by, through freaking uh, Camp, what was the other one? Camp Abel Sentry in Skopje, Macedonia. Mm -hmm. And I had an exercise. Did you just go on their Twitter account and see where they were that way? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
hit me in the DM, Scope J. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Dobra Don, what the hell is this Dobra Don shit? And I, you know, um, my former spouse was a uh, was a Serbo Croatian linguist. Which one so, was this? Uh, I think it was like, oh, this is the first one. Oh, okay. um, hang on, I got it. Yeah, anyways. So it was, yeah, so she was a Serbo Croatian. And, and so, of course, in my house, I'm a multilingual person, anyways. I didn't speak English until I was like about 12 or so. And so, English, German, Polish, Serbo Croatian, Russian, Moldovan, Romanian was spoken in my house a lot. Uh, of, you know, oh. she was a linguist. Yeah. So I paid attention to, to some of her modules and stuff like that from her DLI stuff. And, and I, I, I picked up a little sober creation. I, 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 you know, paid attention to it and here, here I go. I'm about to fly this part off. I land in, I land in, um, in uh, Toronto airfield and everyone's like, who this, who's this guy? Well, who the hell is this? <laughs> I'm here to just imagine just somebody imagine a, I don't know if you want to call it the war zone, but at the time, you know, that, that was, that was kind of kicking off, you know, we were, yeah. there were stuff going on and, uh, and not, not really big as we had in OIF or Afghanistan, but, and then, um, then just imagine just seeing some freaking buck sergeant show up. Hey, I'm here to deliver a part. And do you know where so-and-so is at? And everyone's like looking at you like, how did you first, how'd you get here? Three, yeah, right. <laughs> you're assigned to. So I had, I had to have like a little uh, laminated card with me, almost like a little mm -hmm. script to say, Hey, contact this guy, contact this guy, contact this guy. And like I said, it was, it was, it was almost, it was almost to me. I felt like I was like on a, you know, I was on a secret mission. I was out to do, uh, you know, kind of go out. There. It's kind of like Wild Wild West shit, though, right? When you think about yeah, it, because I mean, it, that it, does it, tie into the, the the initial the invasion into Iraq and you know, three and all, like just the build up. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it, yeah, exactly. My and, like and so, nothing was known. You just were kind was of fucking exactly. making it up. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Here you go. Here's some old school Vietnam body armor, and you know, make sure you're good to go. Yeah, you think it's it, the greatest it, thing in the world. You don't know yeah. it can't really stop anything, but it no, just exactly. looks cool, feels they cool. Know, yeah, and nobody stopped me either. They were like, okay, That's well, the like, yeah, they, so and so and so, yeah, go meet okay. so and so. Yeah, he looks like a soldier, must be. Yeah, gotta go. So go do this and go do that. I'm like, okay, cool. So I get to, so it's so a long, so, so to, to kind of, you know, to condense that story, because there's a lot more in details in between those that are freaking hilarious. Like f discovering the unit that I was assigned to at Fort Hood being there at Camp Bonsteel. And then they, rec they re some of them remembered me from being at Fort Hood. And so, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, what are that you was, doing here? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Dude, you PCS to Germany. Why are you here? You can't come with us, you know. Um, why are you here, Ramos? Dude, you're always into shit. Um, <laughs> so I delivered the part and then I get the part. And then as I'm coming back, I had to take a helicopter ride. But I had to, I remember flying the helicopter ride from Able Century to, or I'm sorry, from Bond Steel to Able Century so I can so I can fly out on a C-130 back to Ramstein and then get and then get picked up in Frankfurt because where I was at I was I was stationed in Wiesbaden Army Airfield. Mm -hmm. So flying back in Black Hawk, seeing some dudes there and seeing some you know seeing some scruffy looking guys and seeing some different uniforms that I've never I've never seen before. What is this? What what kind of beer? You know, what unit? Or did you just like not shave? And mind you now, I'm big army man, so I'm 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 big sarge. So I'm like, why is this freaking guy? It looks like he's got a freaking He's got a beard, but is he in the army? He's got army equipment. He's got a rifle. This guy can't be in the army. You just got, and then my mind, you know, of course, because I have that mind, maybe CIA. You know, I'm just like thinking <laughs> maybe there's stuff going on. Well, it turns out I, it was part of a B team and, a, and an ODA and a PSYOP team that was going to go do some PSYOP stuff uh, or mm -hmm. SF stuff. I don't know, but I never got the deets in, in the Balkans, in the mountains. Yeah, and I was like, oh, this, what is this? And then I'm like, I'm like pointing down on the guy's like, oh, it's a, it's a loudspeaker. I'm like, bullshit. It's not a loudspeaker. I just, they don't make loudspeakers and backpacks like that. And I know you totally tell me I'm totally not tactical. You know I'm saying? Yeah. That's a backpack. These scruffy looking guys, you know, I don't even, I'm like, I'm like the, the innocence right there of, of, of the army when it comes to that. And they're like, uh, no, that does no shit. And so he unzips the bottom of this backpack or this assault pack and it no shit there's two cones of a loudspeaker I'm like apocalypse now shit <laughs> and i'm thinking I'm dun, a mama, dun, my, dun, yeah, my dun, mind dun, is dun, dun. dude my mind is i was like that gif you know Bwah, no way. <laughs> and then the sf guy goes what do you want to hear do you want to hear some music i'm like yeah and the crew chief's like yeah let's hear some music and so the next thing you know, I freaking the, they they popped in. They had a little player like that, and you know, uh, the next thing you know, we were playing, uh, you know, in the in the canyons, in the in the hills, in the mountains before we got to uh, Able Century, seeking destroy from Metallica. There you go. 
Uh, yeah. So was, Great song. Dude, yeah, exactly. Kind of fitting, I suppose, for maybe what you guys were doing. Well, I, I'm, well, I was just <laughs> <a> part. <laughs> I just delivered a part. I'm not really doing any of the seeking or the destroying. Yeah, not exactly. right now, at least. A little good, yeah. <laughs> so, so the guy, I was like, that is so fucking cool. And then the SF guy is like, and he was part of the special operations control element out of Fifth Corps. And he's like, here's my card. If you want to do something cool, you want to do something different, and you want to do SF, PSYOP, you want to do whatever, here, use this card and 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 call that number and call me up when we get one, you know, when you get back. And then, because uh, this was like the Squid Game card. Yeah, uh, it, it was, yeah, exactly. It's almost like the Squid Game card. <laughs> and he's like, call back and then, and then, you know, give me call in a couple of weeks and then we'll set this thing up for you to go to, uh, to PSYOP if you want, or, you know, to go to SOF. I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. <clears throat> excited and shit and so sure as shit i got back and uh i, t- I was telling my 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 ncoic because i was in the s3 at the time and uh he was like his mind was he was just he was just laughing he's like no way dude you really did you really did that i'm like yeah man and then like a couple of weeks later there was like a couple of sit reps that said you know a lone buck sergeant was walking around trying to deliver a part did he ever make it to his destination you know you know they were kind of wondering it was almost like you have legends of uh of a ghost or something like that there was this lone soldier with a part <laughs> like looking that, to deliver like aircraft. that that patch on your wall behind you that's you. yeah yeah, yeah exactly exactly the ghost we got to get into yeah yeah so so then um so then i put in a packet uh, back in the day you had to do phone call packets and stuff like that and then of course i had to get like they're not, not really a waiver but I, I was i guess you could say i was getting shit but they're like can't you know actually they don't, they don't, they don't there's no first names in big army they're like sergeant ramos you realize that you know you're gonna be 30 years old when you graduate jump you know jump school because you gotta be everyone qualified you gotta go through all these physicals and blah blah, blah and then the training itself and blah, blah blah i'm like yeah 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 but no, i don't know so got it approved and there i was on my 30th birthday uh, taking my first jump, uh, uh, I was ground or just jump week of airborne school. Nice. Well, quick. Happy <laughs> birthday. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, as so I did that and then, uh, you know, and then after that, I, um, you know, went to the side of course. And then, uh, and then after that, it was like nine 11 hit like that year. Cause it was in 2001. And oh, okay. There we go. Now it gets real. Yeah. And I was like, Oh shit. And, and, the unit that I was assigned that I was going to be assigned to was already coming back from Kosovo and I had already done the combat jump with um, the Ranger Regiment in Objective Rhino. And so mm-hmm. these, these weren't, you know, these, um, you know, when you think PSYOP, everyone's like, who's they look Intel? Nah, these guys, it's just like special forces. It's, it's just like CA. It's just like PSYOP. I'm not trying to say they're all the same, but it's just like, it's hard to describe the roles of what they do. And then, you think, well, then that's Intel. No, that's not Intel. Or, you know, then that's like the SVAP. No, that's not like the SVAP. It's more specialized, right? Yeah, yeah. it's more yeah. like, yeah, or maybe you're like combat engineers. No, that's not how it works. So when, when I say <clears throat> like special forces, like CA, like PSYOP, I'm not I'm not like that fucking meme that everyone, I'm still trying to find out who said that. This looks almost like special forces. <laughs> I want to know who was the originator of that meme because I have heard, never heard a PSYOP guy, SA, uh, uh, SF guy. Uh, well, SAS guy too, uh, uh, a CA guy ever say, or gal say that ever that ever ever say that. Um, it's kind of hard to pin it down to what to what they the, each role does. Um, so uh, you know, they came back from Afghanistan, and then uh, and then the word came out, hey, you're going to be doing some train up with uh, 10th Special Forces Group, and you're going to be part of the uh, task force Viking out of just sort of north to uh, to invade Iraq. Um, through the north well you know some other stuff too <clears throat> oh so you came did you, so you came from jordan come down that way mm, no we went from uh, we did we did operation ugly baby which was a uh, infiltration the largest the largest aerial infiltration so all you 10th group guys i want to give you all a shout out to especially second battalion that was i'm sorry that was that was, that was the battalion that i was assigned to me and my team was assigned to um operation ugly baby was the longest uh, aerial infiltration uh, in history was that the actual name yeah, it was Operation Ugly Baby. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so offensive today. That would that's definitely oh, yeah, something you, getting relief. Yeah, there's there's a lot of names, a lot of names right now, brother. That would you couldn't that say wasn't that long ago. That's so good. Oh, I missed so Operation. Days. So Operation Ugly Baby was an infiltration of special operations forces into northern Iraq. Or is this? Let me see. Is this on Wikipedia? Let me look yeah, this. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and look it up. All right. So. Operation. So, no, keep going. Please don't. Don't wait for so, me. Yeah. So the so <laughs> the, 
so so we we conducted operation ugly baby and and, and from we launched from uh, uh uh oh you're right task force Viking. look at that he's not making this shit up folks that's real <laughs> wow task force viking operation yeah ugly it's baby. hard for me to talk about this because uh you know even the guys like red he's like you should yeah. talk about this shit man you should talk i i feel I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna go put this in the chat right now and tell them that hey, you're talking about ugly ugly <laughs> baby. <laughs> exactly, um, dude. It, it 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 was an experience flying in and, and jinking and jiving and. What you come in on? Uh, uh, it was an MC-130 uh, combat Talon. Uh, it was ah. the Special Operations Air Force AFSOC one. Okay. And, uh, Did you guys jump or no? You didn't no, jump no. there. No, no, no. Yeah, I was gonna there say there was actually there was actually some contingencies. I don't know if I can talk about that anymore. I don't know. Twenty years about twenty years. Yeah, is about. you know, there were audience. Yeah, there were there were there were. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Hang on, I'm looking around and see. You know, I have my my door busted down behind me. I don't, yeah, I mean, there's like there's Joe Rogan and then there's me. So somewhere in between, right? In terms of ears, you know. So yeah, careful well, what you I mean, say. Yeah, you don't want to be in heard. Yeah, but Lafayette yeah. Lee was on here, bro. Come on, man. He was twenty four thousand strong. Yeah, let me, let me. Yeah, let me. I, I will get a comment about him later. Um, so, um, so there was a contingency to possibly jump into into northern Iraq. There was a, there was a, several courses of action that we had trained up for with Tenth Special Forces Group as Alpha as as Ninth Psyop Battalion uh, out of Fort Bragg. And it was, it was, there were, we, we trained with them, jump, shoot, train. I mean, all the train ups we did with them and they, and they were selected. They're like, okay, yep. We want this team to go with us and we don't want this team to go with us or we can move. To, so it was, it yeah. was almost like, um, they wanted to make sure that some of the stuff that we were doing long range, uh, uh, you know, long range drop patrol, not, you know, long range ingress, I guess you would say yeah, <sighs> being in the mountains of, Near, you know, near in, near Pikes Peak and, and humping rucks and, and all yeah. that. It, it's, whoo, especially with that altitude, yeah, it smoke your bags, man. You think you're in shape. You think you're no, in shape. There, there's nothing, fresh. nothing can prepare you for elevation in the mountains. No, no. And, and, it, and it's being cold too, because it was yeah. about, it was about this time of year or, you know, last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, it was, uh, it was pretty cold. So did that. Um, We did, we did, there was, there were several engagements uh, that we were involved in. Um. Uh, there was the Battle of Ansifni, and there was the move, the push down to Mosul. Um, that was part of a, a PSYOP mission that we did. And, and, and then there was... Uh, so, well, hold on. So how did you guys actually insert then? Did you... So we were flying on Baby. Or, right? you were flying yeah. on, on Ugly Baby. We are flying on this MC-130 Combat Talon, and we're flying low, and it lands at uh, the airfield in Erbil. And oh, okay. Mind yeah. you, yeah. Mind, still, mind, we're still there. Yeah, we're still there, yeah. <laughs> They were like, oh, you need to go to her bill. You, you don't know what life is like, you know. I, I, let, the, I let the kids shit talk their shit. You know what I mean? I'm I'm in my 50s, man. I don't, I'm like, yeah, okay, kid, you know, whatever. Oh, you don't know what to play, man. You fucking boomer. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and oh, you, yeah. you don't I, hold on I, real quick. So for those who don't know, Erbil is still going on. It's it's in Iraq, right? It's it's, it's Kurdistan. What, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it's where officers specifically. And senior NCOs who somehow lack a overseas service insignia or combat patch, they get a flight from Kuwait, they go hang out for the 72 hours, and then they come back and put a patch on. That's what it is. All right. For the civilians who don't understand, this is a big deal in the military, right? It, it used to mean something like the good Kenneth Ramos here is talking about. It doesn't really mean shit anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It really doesn't because it's been, it's like everything else. It's been gamed. Oh. The system's been gamed. There's a loophole oh. for everything. Dude, don't get me started. Uh, oh, I, I'm going to get you started, but just yeah. not yet. It's we're yeah. only 30 minutes in. Like we're so. Anyway, minutes. all right. Let's back up. That's Erbil. So you you guys inserted in Erbil. Okay, so you're in Erbil. So now, mind you, now Erbil. I mean, it was through the greens. I mean, everyone's like, oh, and of course you're going to have those guys. The guys now they're going to be like, it wasn't that bad. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, you know. You know, it, it, you, you, the guy, you know, talking to a guy who's got a cab, you know, for fucking for nothing. And I look at my awards and my cab, and I'm like. Yeah, but I was with the SF dudes, and they and they don't put cabs in unless they fucking mean it. You know what I mean? They they, they special. Well, I mean, when you and I went though, and when we got them, they were backdated. Well, right, because it didn't but, come out to two thousand five. So I mean, that's right. what mine was for. So Correct. same thing. But yeah, now I mean, it's a, but, 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 another thing. It's, but you look at it though, is that yeah. a lot of these units that you get a cat like I'm proud to have been awarded the cab and my right. 
you know, and all my awards that I got from 10th SF group, because a SF, a special forces unit will not put anybody in for an award. Unless no blanket awards. No right? blanket awards. It's like yeah, legit yeah. fucking clout. It, it, it is like straight up, you did this. I saw Ken do this. I saw his team do that. And then I saw yeah. his other soldiers yeah. do this. And then I saw him do this. And then he did that. Yeah. And then he was supporting us with this. SF yeah. guys just don't do blank, that blanket shit like that, man. Yeah. They, I have no idea. I honestly don't know because we've never submitted them since then in any unit I've been in. But I remember when we submitted ours and they were backdated. I mean, this was a few years after the award was approved. Like we had to get actual witness statements. We had to get actual grid coordinates, it, actual it, incident reports, all that stuff. I'll I don't know you, if that still goes on. No, actually it does because that's how I was awarded mine. It, it was a- no, I mean, the, yeah, but was, that's how we, but I'm saying like now- <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, the blanket yeah. stuff. That's what I'm saying. So I don't know, but yeah, I mean, I feel bad because I feel like you. There's a gener or there's a there's an error that where you know the the awards were legitimate, and then we've seen kind of the devolution of the seriousness in them. And oh, yeah. like I, I talk about it all the time. My grandfather, you know, he was a Korean War vet. Uh, rest his rest his rest his soul now. But I mean, he was awarded a Bronze Star with Valor. And it really bothers me to see people who just hang out behind a fucking computer at a talk for nine months and they get put in for bronze stars. Now, it may not have the V device, but what's the fucking civilian know that? Civilians don't know that. They just see, oh, this guy's got a bronze star. It must be something like, actually, no, that means he submitted the fucking reports on time. It being, it being, and his rank was it, above an E6. Was, I was about to say, it had, it a, and then the army puts out a regulation. There will be no awards board, and this will not be your base on rank. Bullshit, whatever. I Man, I still remember. So I just got to tell this real quick, and then I want you to pick back up. But, and I've said this on here before, but for those who haven't heard it, the DCO, who was the, the CG technically at the time on my deployment to Afghanistan, when he came in, <clears throat> When it was time to start preparing awards, because, you know, on a nine month deployment, you got to start having your awards in after four months. Right. Because we, because yeah. that's when that's when everything Sarge, happens. The first Sarge, four months. Right. right. Big, Sarge, big Sarge rules apply, man. When it comes to combat. <laughs> Don't you know that? <laughs> I remember him coming and saying very specifically. Forty percent of you are getting bronze stars. Sixty percent of you are getting our comms and COICs figure out who's getting what. And that was a one-star general that came in and specifically yeah. said that. You know, that, that kind of shit <laughs> there already sets the mood for what you're freaking, for, for what you're going to fucking, it was just, like, it, why it, you put it in? Yeah. It, What's why you say that shit? You know what I mean? Yeah. At that point, you, you know, a soldier nowadays, I guarantee it, it, you know, and there's another thing too, you look at some of the Medal of Honor recipients and you see what the shit they went through when it comes to some of their awards, or you look at some of their, you know, my, you were talking about dad. My dad was a, you know, was a Vietnam veteran, uh, was wounded and uh, had a purple heart. And he, he received a combat infantryman's man. If yeah. bad. He got fucking, he was engaging the NVA. He was going against the VC too. I mean, he was, he was, he got shot. He got hit up. You know, he bam, smoked. I mean, he's alive, obviously, but he's, he was, he was pretty wounded. And, and now uh, purple heart, oh, uh, you know what I mean? And, then, yeah. and for, for a flick, a, fl a flick. Technically, can you say that an individual can get a purple heart like that? Yeah, technically, yes, technically. What kind of a person would you be though to push it? Oh, uh, well, we have a lot of people that unfortunately, right. push it. but that's right. it's it's no fault of their own. I I tie it back to even the, we go back to 03 when we were leaving in 04 and we were getting PCS yeah. awards right after whatever the extension number it was. But I just remember I a I didn't really care. I was an E4, whatever. I just remember hearing some of the awards that were coming out and it seemed very rank driven, even then, like even in 2004, like, oh, you get a bronze star once again, if you were an E7 or above and, you know, nobody got hurt, for example. Or well, well you know, I'm glad you brought that up because <laughs> I came and I, now mind you, I, I, so I did operation during freedom, the, the invasion with 10th yeah. group. And it was time for us to go back and my unit was going to go back. And because of how I did and my team did, uh, cause I was, a, I was a team leader for a PSYOP team. I was to stay to do other stuff in the Western mm -hmm. desert that, that I know I can't talk about because there was some stuff that had to go on the additional mission support that 10th SF group had us provide and, and conduct. And, um, so we did it. It was fun. I, I was like, this, this is the shit that I wanted to do. You know what I mean? This is, this is what I'm talking yeah. about, you know, a bla blaring a loudspeaker at a village to get a bad guy to come out. And then we keep his ass up all freaking night. And I, I remember one of the, one of the events 
It was a, it was, was it Britney Spears? You guys were playing? Was that the, who, well, well, yeah, Britain, dude. Oh my God. Don't even if that was me. I'd be like, Oh, I love this song. Play it again. Britney oh, Spears. <laughs> <laughs> Britney Spears, believe it or not, came more from the Iraqis and the current. Oh, yeah. Oh, as opposed okay. to, you know, Mr. 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 Antonio, because they couldn't say my name, Ken. I don't know why. So I just, <laughs> just call me Antonio. That's my middle name. <laughs> Antonio, Antonio. Yes. Yes. Mr. Britney Spears. What about her? She's so nice. Yeah. Play more. I'm like, dude, come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You're fit. You're, aren't you supposed to be like pulling security on the perimeter while we go and do some stuff? <laughs> so there was, there was some psy up faux pas that I've done too. I'm not perfect either. Uh, it, I was, I meant to play. We're doing, and I will say on this extended mission that I was on, I got to, we had, we were just like, Hey, we got to keep this guy up. We're looking for so-and-so and and we got to look for so-and-so. And And I'm like, okay, cool. So uh, the ODA commander's like, okay, make sure this, 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 make sure that. So then he comes over the mic. He comes over the fight. Uh, Blink, blink. You know, my call sign. Begin. Sorry. up. I'm like, that's, that was their thing. Begin. Sorry. (laughs) So so me me and my team were like, (laughs) we're all laughing. And um, I told my, my, speaker specialist my our speaker monkey calm speaker bitch you know whatever it's just it's sorry that's just the name you're, you're hearing you're hearing real names these are this isn't we're not bullshitting around i go hey hey let me get that he's like no i'm speaker bitch i'm gonna do this no, no I, it's okay you, you've been up all night let me play one and he's like all right don't fuck it up it's already ready to go well me grabbing the yeah, grabbing the brick ass ipod i got this whatever and i play um the begin we i play the you know, the introduction speech of the borg we are the borg lower your shields and surrender your ships. And then I hear on the mic, what the fuck is that? And then, <laughs> and then, and then, as, and then the thing was, is that if you know, if you know, Star Trek, the Borg says, we will add your technological and biological distinctiveness to our own. Your culture will learn to service us. And man, that all you hear all these guys going, Oh my God, they're playing the board. Those SF dudes are just giggling their asses off. And I'm they're all fucking to, nerds. Yeah, well, yeah, they're SF they guys, are, minute, Yeah, they are nerds. And they're, they're, that's what they're, you need to understand. SF dudes are really smart, athletic nerds. That's what yeah, they exactly. are. With guns, and, <laughs> and so it's so here. I'm sitting there. If, if you could point a light on me, I'm blushing like crazy. I'm embarrassed as shit. My Joes are laughing at me because I played. You know that we are the Borg. Uh, <laughs> culture will learn to service us. And then the ODA commander, all serious, says, "And sigh up, uh, and sigh up." <laughs> <laughs> and so everyone, you can hear everybody kind of like in the distance laughing and giggling. And that was just one, you know. So, anyways. So I get, hey, you're done. Your mission, your, your mission's complete. You're up. You're relieved of tasking. You got to go back to Fort Bragg. All right, cool. So I go back to Fort Bragg. And, and then at the time, the unit, okay, we got, we got, we're, we're going to reset and we got to go back and, you know, we have to go and, um, you know, we're, we're going to support uh, the mission of Fallujah. Then I came down on orders for Germany to the 1st Armored Division to, to PCS the following year. And that's where the fun starts. And, and yeah, in 2004. Yep. So holy crap. So I get to, I get to first armor division, you know, after I PCS and all that and say my goodbyes. And this is now my second tour in Iraq. Did you join, did you link up with them already there? Yeah. Yeah. They were already, they were already there. And, um, but so this was their first time there. So they, yeah. they weren't really in the invasion part of it. I mean, they were sort of kind of was. No, and, they uh, created a garrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, yeah, they, they, they were, yeah, no, I'm serious. They were, I was kind of like, all the fun. That's did what that. they did. Yeah, I was kind of like, I will say there were some missions that First Armored Division did that were great. They were pretty good. Uh, General Dempsey at the time uh, was there because General yeah. Sanchez had left and then yeah, went. I, 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 we used to go to Shitter. That was one of the yeah, spots yeah. on D Main Guard. Was, yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. General Dempsey Shitter. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> so, so during that time there, I, for, I, get, I get to Central Region, I get to Germany, and uh, there's, a, there's some rear D guys there. And, they're like, uh, hey, uh, SF, huh? Like, oh, what's your MOS? I got 37 Fox. I'm like, what is that, Fueler? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's PSYOP. They're like, the oh, so you work in the S2? I'm like, no, I don't work in the S2. That <laughs> shit out of my face. And um, the S2 is Intel for the intelligence for those. Yeah. I, I try to try and decipher a lot because there I do. Oh, I'm I sorry. am cognizant of the fact that I bring a lot of guys from the Army on and I, we, we can understand this stuff, but I try to break it down for people who have no idea what the fuck we're talking about. Correct. So. Intel, obviously, I, correction. Yeah. So, yeah. so there we go. Anyway, so Charles like, Mike, which yeah, means yeah. to continue mission, which correct. means to go on. This means continue. I mean, shut the fuck up. <laughs> talk again. Um, so I was like, uh, yeah, whatever. And so my, my boss down there, uh, uh, she was like, where's my fucking sign up NCO? I need to fucking show up now, blah, blah, blah. 
and and they were expecting a you know because because you know this this division psyop division psyop sergeant missions or assignments were new so they weren't like they are now they're they're sergeant major positions now but you know they were like yeah hey, we'll make them a sergeant first class or something like that well i was a staff sergeant when i showed up so uh, they're like uh, i can't i can't wait to have my nco here blah 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 and then i show up and then she's like you're a staff sergeant <laughs> you're yes i am <laughs> yes ma'am yes ma'am <laughs> And then she's like, okay, cool. And she, then she, you know, she sat down and got a little experience that, and give me, a, I give her an experience pitch and all that. Cypher's always got to give you the elevator speech, no matter what, even if fucking, even if you don't ask for it, a Cypher will fucking tell you. I don't want to say we're worse like West Pointers or fucking pilots, but I will say that, you know, because nobody understands what Cyopers do, they, they get that you, you got to pitch the fucking what Cyopers do. And so, um, especially in a tactical environment, even more so in the regional environment and then even more in a strategic, uh, a strategic environment. And so I'm there and the next, you know, we're showing up and, and then that's when a, we got, we got notified that the mission is going to be extended. Uh, General Hurtling, who was the DCG uh, for support. Mm -hmm. I remember him. Yes. Yep. Came and, and, came and then and pitched mail and cried. Yep. yep. And then uh, General Scaparotti. Scapper, uh, I remember that name. What, yeah. what, what did he do? He was the, uh, he was, the, uh, he was the ADC. Was Dempsey's? No, 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 that's right. He's 82nd, right? No, no. Because remember now, remember now the, the, the division had the assistant division commander for support and an and uh, assistant division commander for uh, maneuver. Uh, so oh. ADCS and ADCM. Yeah, Hurtling was ADCS. Yeah. Jeff Roddy was ADCM. Got and, it. Okay. And so um, we got extended. And uh, of course, during that time, that that's when all of us in the body militia picked up their stuff. And that's <laughs> when everything yep. was freaking nuts that's, and that's, there was, yeah, ID that, was that was a fun time yeah and rocketing you know the d main got rocketed a few times so how so, do you we're, real quick so how do you feel about that guy as the actual what's he the president or is he the prime minister right now in iraq is it, is they it fucking, is it there? are they doing are they doing shit i mean are they prime minister uh maktadar al Sadr, that guy oh maktadar Oh. That motherfucker! That's the fucking guy that just ru almost ruined my redeployment. That guy, I'm gonna tell you what. Like that dude's in charge of the fucking country right now, and he was like our biggest enemy in 2004. Yeah, let me let me let me tell you let me tell you about Muck Tuck. And here's my <laughs> upside of the house. We call them Muck Tuck. Of course, we had some IO guys and, and PAO guys say you can't say that because that's whatever. Of course, you know, the Operation Iraqi Freedom really. Really, really tried to be a, a political correct type of naming convention for our adversaries. Um, <laughs> like you, you can fucking say if you said fucking Haji and anything, people like <gasps> clutching pearls and oh dear lord, <laughs> you know I those you know me that you know and all this. <laughs> so, you couldn't say that in any fucking psyop stuff. You couldn't. You couldn't see. I came from like I said. I came from Ninth Psy Battalion. I just finished supporting Tenth Special Forces Group. They my my mission at the time when I was in Ninth Battalion was we were to agitate the enemy to get mm -hmm. them to fucking fight us. That was the we were the bullet magnets. We would play our loudspeakers. And, and so we would, real quick, is that give a thirty seconds on what psychological operations is? Because you said the elevator speech. Give a shorter version. Yeah, a shorter version is basically uh, we're influencing foreign uh, target audiences uh, through their vulnerabilities and their susceptibilities uh, through um, our target audience analysis. So that way, for instance, uh, we know if you're if you're hungry, and we know we can we, we could use that vulnerability uh, to, mm. to get them to eat. We could direct you to influence your behavior, uh, you know, persuade and change and influence your behavior. That's our that's the psyop motto. Uh, decisive influence. I'm drinking out of my eighth side. Exactly. There we go. Um, decisive <laughs> influence. So I came from a decisive influence standpoint right. to now. Now you know what that is at home. Hopefully. Oh, let's let's, uh, let's not call him Haji. Let's not call him Muck Tuck, and let's not call him this. So when did that happen? As soon as what? Like, as soon as 11 happened. As soon as 11 happened. As soon as 9 11 happened. Yeah, because we went to this. Then you know, enemy is not, and of course, the enemy is not Islam. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows, but there are some individuals that take advantage and and will hijack something to make right. it look like it is. You know, and it's it's. Uh, I don't Why like. Do we worry about that? Though? Do you think that was because we just we we had kind of trans transcended into this like twenty four hour news media cycle? Inter like Man, everything's on TV. You can't really think about this. Imagine if Operation Iraqi Freedom would have kicked off on Facebook. Imagine no, that's if, what I, but, but I mean, and it did, you gotta remember Facebook didn't come out till later. So it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a, it, we were always, we were always briefing. We always had briefers. 
we had embeds that were with us. So if they saw a PSYOP guy saying, fucking Haji and my tug and blah, 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 of course that would get reported up. But that would be real. Like, that's my point. Like, that would be like, here's what, like, here's what my thing. And I say this all the time. I love it. Like, imagine if Dana White literally was the fucking president or just someone who was like that. You know what I mean? If we're going back to the invasion, for an example, and, you know, our spokesman was, say it was Dana White. That's what Dana White would say. He'd be like, hey, you know what? We had a shitty fucking day or we had a great fucking day. We killed a lot of fucking Hajis. But right, right. Oh, right. Or, or Joe Rogan. This is because well, I can't wait to talk about Joe Rogan later. But yeah, but but right. I, I I'm just trying to pinpoint where because I don't know. Like at, at that point in time, look, dude, I was 22, 23 years old. Like I'm just an idiot. I was only focused on myself. I was old. And, I was already in my 30s, dude. Yeah. I mean, so I was focused on like me and uh, am I gonna have power in the generator to pluck around with my PlayStation and hope it didn't break? You know, right, right. the dust that night. You know, and oh, by the way, you had to do. Uh, you had to go make sure that the the, the TCVIPs were good and. And then also, yeah, you know, like I lived a very, very insulated bubble. I was definitely in the mindset of this. Is, all I worry about is this. But you're at a you were at a higher level. You started operating at a higher level. But I'm just trying to figure out. I wish there was someone who could explain to me where it all went to this, as you decide or said, this political correct way of conducting a fucking war. Well, I will I will say that. Um when, when Muck Tuck was heating up and, and this guy, this, this, this stuff was, was Muck Tuck was, and, and uh, was in, can be, this can be talked about now, either we're talking about the decision to kill him or not kill him. Yeah. Um, there were actual products made to say that Muck Tuck is dead. Muck Tuck is going to get fucked up. Uh, and or dude Muck, is only 47 or Muck, years old. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. How he, so he was in his, he was probably 27 then. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Like was, I give this motherfucker a lot of credit for surviving. Number one, yeah. like he's still alive. Right. Right. And, and, and how, and now he's the, how dude, all the factions, he's the fucking president. Yeah, think, think about all, how all the factions though, how all of them worked out. I he's honestly, a, I'm more impressed with him at this. Just reading that now. I honestly thought he was probably in his late fifties, early sixties. That dude for him to be alive, you know, I'm going to go back and do a case study on this dude. It's fucking inc- it's insane to me but anyway please continue right. so 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 muck tuck we you know we did have at the time those those different types of style products ready to to lay into well i understand that though right because you're planning for both you don't yeah. want to be left unprepared yeah. i got that that's nothing yeah. wrong with that right but um, uh, but he was also shitty as fuck when he would tell the Mahdi militia to fire at our m1 tanks or our brass yes. from mosques and it's a fucking this, dick then he, yeah and so so here we go Ken Ramos, once again, on another single mission, singleton mission. <laughs> this, this one I, I do. This one I do. I'm the <laughs> ghost. I, and I gotta do what I gotta, you know, forget about it. I'm gonna go and uh, you know, <laughs> prove this asshole wrong. Um, you know, this is back in the day when we had receipts. There was a PSYOP team and there were some individuals that were down in that area and on the Jaff. I think it was in the Jaff. And um it was not Jaff. Yeah, yeah. And so he was there was all that talk about you guys are per- the coalition is purposely destroying mosques and they're purposely doing that. <clears throat> And the guys on the ground were saying, no, dude, they're firing at us from fucking this. Yeah. They're firing from loss. They're firing from holy. Yeah. No way. This not happened. Americans are lying. And so we got a call from one of our SAP teams and one of our uh, comp cam teams. And Pete, and this is the, this is the, this is the, the synergy, the, the working environment of public affairs and psyop for the first time <laughs> I ever, cause you know, public affairs and psyop, that's like oil and water. That's like freaking fire, you know, fire and gasoline or whatever you want to call it. There PAOs, I say PAOs now get along way better than what we did with psyopers back in the day. Um, sometimes they're just fucking insufferable. Um, and and we got word that there was video, actual footage of uh, the Mahdi militia firing at our first armor division soldiers from the last pew, pew, pew. And so <clears throat> we're like, what? That's really happening? I'm like, yeah. And so uh, my boss looked at me, I looked at her, and she's like, fucking hey, let's, let's fucking go, let's go, let's go check this out. I'm like, yes, ma'am, let's go. I said, I could get, a, I could get an aircraft. I can, let me go talk to the contacts that I got for uh, the fourth brigade, uh, the fourth combat aviation brigade, uh, first armor division, the, the Eagle, Eagle brigade. Let's go fucking do it. And so uh, we, we flew down there, singleton mission, me and her flew down there on the specific mission to grab this CD of footage. You know, back in the day, a one gigabyte CD was like an expensive piece already. Cause you know, memory. On that there. disc. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get, those big old giant, you know, and, um, so me and her had to fly back from, from Najaf. We, we flew down from Baghdad down to Najaf. 
And the pilot, the pilot, which is even got told, this is a no film mission. You're going to fucking fly this back and blah, blah, blah. And so we grabbed the CD with, with imagery and video of that. And the PAO guy was like, can I get a copy of it? I'm like, you didn't burn one. So yeah, you know, fucking <laughs> because, because it was really close hold because uh, general Sanchez wanted to give a, uh, his afternoon, his evening update about, you know, what was happening. And everyone was really Al Jazeera, even Fox news, CNN, uh, you know, sky news, American forces are firing from mosques in the, uh, <laughs> I'm like, dude, you just, that was, this is not what's fucking happening. This was Ashley boots on the ground, like legit analog disinformation is what we're, what, yeah, isn't it weird that like, the most technological advanced military lost basically an information war at the time. It sucked. Yeah. It's because at that time, um, uh, I think it was right after that video, right after that video mission that we did, then that's when the, the Mahdi militia really started kicking up and then all the roads are red. You, mm -hmm. you, you had to get, you had to get specific permission um, to the point to where officers were no longer going on these fucking missions, going in these milk runs back from the green zone to buy app. They were, they were not. They were like, uh, first it was it was funny because it was like only people authorized to approve this mission and be a convoy commander as a major. Major gets hit by an ID. <laughs> okay, uh, let's make it a captain, and it's a fucking captain. And, and that captain gets killed. It was like one of the intel uh, a captain. I can't remember his name. He was the intel guy. He got his 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 his, his Humvee got fucked up, and he got killed. And then after that, they're like, uh, maybe um, okay, let's bring it down to uh, sergeant first class, and then another ID hit. It got to the point to where they were like, okay, we don't want to move a lot of staff out to go do these milk runs and go do the mail runs and all that. It has to yeah. happen. <clears throat> so it was like staff sergeant. And, you know, at that point, it was like the lowest rank they made it was staff, staff sergeant. Well, I went on a couple of milk runs myself and holy shit, when the Mahdi militia was going on, you know, my boss was like finally saying, hey, can you get a roll back? Um, I know you understand you're, you're supporting the HSC, but uh, we, got a, we got some other stuff going on. And so her and I, and, and then the IO officer and all that had to deal with a leaflet, how to, how to deliver our leaflets and our products to our PSYOP teams in al Kut and Ajaf. Um, and there's another, there's another location. I think it was uh, down in Sadr City or something like that. And we had the 345th PSYOP company attached to us. So we had a, we kind of had like figure, you know, this is like big, big game planning. You know, here I am like, oh, wow, cool. We need to do this. At that time, Al Jazeera released the video of Nicholas Berg getting beheaded. Oh my God. So I was home when that one happened. And I that, like, I still see that clear as day watching oh, it in dude, my fucking parent. Like I was at my parents' house watching this, it in like the room where their computer was. And yeah, the sound of it, bro, I, I it was I, fucking awful, man. It was, it was, at, it, it, and at that point that changed the whole demeanor yeah. staff because now we've never, we have never seen our enemies. We always hear about it. We always talk about, well, take their heads, yeah. head them on, but we've never seen them. They like, did it fucking live. Like yeah, the dude it, was alive. Yeah, it was and, insane. And I was like, everyone was it like, was it's so insane. brutal. It was. Everyone was in shock. We're like, holy. And then, I mean, I'm still talking about it right now, kind of like because I remember. Uh, like, I'm gonna feel. I feel the same way, man. Like I, can, plans vault. I feel we're sick. I really do. Yeah. We're in the plans vault. We were doing the planning for that for the additional leaflet support. I saw that fucking dude. I was like, isn't that that kid that, and I'm like, oh, who's that? Who's that dude? And and then they're like, yeah. contracted truck driver, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, they were, they were, no, we were like, we were asking, who's that guy on there? And is mm. that kid that's missing? And then, you know, one of my, you know, one of my, uh, one of the members of the staff, can you speak a little bit Arabic? Are they, what are they saying? Like, ah, you know, infidels driving us out and uh, they're going to pay. And then as soon as they started to do the beheading, I was like, what in the, what, holy and I, I, at that point, I was speechless. At that, I, I do that. I couldn't. I think, and I was a smoker at the time. I think I smoked like a pack of cigarettes after watching that shit because no one. Had ever uh, uh, yeah, I definitely drank a, a yeah. lot. And because I was just, I, I at that point for me, and I don't know about how what you felt because you were still there, obviously operationally doing things. But I just remember feeling like, the "Fuck, did I just do for 15 months?" And now I'm back here and completely helpless. Now I'm just like everybody else, just watching, right? Like you can't do shit, right? And you're just watching this new reality every day and wondering, well, what am I going to wake up to tomorrow? Like, right. Because you probably remember this. It may have been similar. It may have not have been. But no one at any point, at any time prior to the invasion told us or gave me the impression that, oh, this is going to be you know, a little more than six months. The biggest thing they hammered forever, despite the multiple extensions that did come, 
was you'll be home before Christmas. That's all they told right. us. You'll be home before right. Christmas, 2003, right? Everyone, yeah. Everyone. yeah. And I remember we, we caught Saddam Hussein, what? It was December 13th, I believe, in 2003. 13th or 15th. It was one of those yep. days. And and I just remember like, all right, finally, we're fucking, let's go home. No, yeah. fucking Christmas yeah. Eve, we sat up waiting for this battalion-sized yeah. element. They told us that was going to overrun the Biap airport. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're sitting on yeah. fighting positions and shit. I'm like, what the oh, fuck man. are we doing? Yeah, it, 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 it got to the point to where... Um... I was getting frustrated because I was get, we were, I, I was looking at this from a SIA point of view, how the, the SIA point of view of it from the division side of the house was supported. But then when it got to MNCI and it got to the IO guys up there and the public affairs guys and spokespeople, they didn't, they didn't want to present that. They didn't want to present that, that bleakness. They didn't like, Oh no. Well, uh, general Shinseki predicted it. Yeah. And they didn't want to hear him. Dude. Great, <laughs> great example. As a matter of fact, Rumsfeld fucking relieved his ass because he said it was going to take uh, uh, so much, so many soldiers to do it. Yeah. And he even said uh, through through several discussions and stuff like that. And I read this in books. I've seen this in, like I said, all this, some of this is anecdotal as well. Is that General Sinseki even said that if you blew by the provinces, especially the Sunni Triangle, it was going to come back tenfold. Especially when you're dealing with individuals from Iran, Al Sistani, all those guys. And and man, did he did he fucking call it, dude? He he fucking called it to the T. Um, he didn't, he did he wasn't, he wasn't on the market about Fallujah, but he said that he, he was talking about how, um, how that, how that would present an issue in the beginning, but, but he was dead. Like you said, he's dead on point, man. He got fired for it, for saying this. Yeah. yeah. He was like strikers. And, and strikers. I always thought he got fired for giving everybody a goddamn black beret, but he didn't. It was actually for <laughs> <laughs> start about the black beret either. You know what? <laughs> you know what uniform? What uniform uh, headgear he was wearing when he retired? It wasn't the black beret. It was his fucking service cat with scrambled eggs on on the bill. I'm like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> you really gonna freaking do that, man? Oh my god! I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd be if I was general, I'd have been sporting that shit like Atsumada, like ah, oh, it's a fight a pizza, fucking. <laughs> 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 I'd, have been at, I'd have been at the worst beret on the planet, you know. I got one actually from the Iraqi army, like their berets. I got I got like a box full of their uniform shit yeah. somewhere, but I do have a beret. It's hilarious, and I got like the. I think that their version with their BDUs, whatever it is, it's all black, but it's it's like a triple XL. Yeah, yeah, so oh I, yeah. I, 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 was... <laughs> I, still, I still have. I I I, I mean when I, I when I when I was uh, reassigned from First Armored Division back to uh, back to the Psyop land, I, uh, I I I used to I was. I don't want to say I was just, I, I want to, I need I knew I needed to get back to brag. I knew I needed to get back yeah. to, 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 you know, to be on jump status so much to the point that I was so uh, jaded that I even jumped my first armor division black beret on a couple of jumps with me, just kind of like rub it in here, get some airborne dirt in there. You suck up, you know, uh, <laughs> stupid black beret, blah, you know, <laughs> but uh, it was, fuck. yeah, it was, it was crazy. And then, um, then of course, you know, we had the, um, we had to, we, we left, we pulled in Afghanistan where we left in the middle of the night during the uh, transitional government from, uh, for, was it Paul Bremer and gave it over to, uh, what's his name? Gave it to the Iraqi. Look, I, I've gone on so many rants about Paul Bremer. I'm yeah. not going to do it again, but if there's one fucking person who literally ruined our entire time in, in Iraq, I would simply tie it back to him and his decision to completely disband. Now you may, you may be able to say agree or disagree or have better insight but i just remember reading about it when he, the, the when he disbanded the entire iraqi army and said yeah. you could have no involvement in the new government or a military yeah. anything going forward agreed man i was 22 years old at the time and i just remember thinking like all right hold on say unfortunately the united states finds themselves in a position to where they get invaded some foreign military comes in, disbands our military, all what, 2.2 million of us probably? Give or take it. Force, yeah, right? And says, you guys can't do shit from now on. Did anyone think what would be the second and third order effect of that? Bro, think about <laughs> you, what you just asked right now. Look what's happening right now with the current electorate. Oh, what are my you talking God. About? If you voted for Trump, you can't be involved in shit. <laughs> None but it's a vicious, <laughs> racist you can't do any of that crap. You know what I mean? Well, I just saw like, uh, this is another thing, like this, this President Biden just did his press conference, but he's essentially saying if we don't pass the voting rights stuff that they're trying to propose that we can't guarantee that these elections are legitimate. Are legitimate, like, yeah. Did you just get elected? So how is it not a legitimate election? Not only, not only that, but 
if I so you're saying you don't want to oh like goodness. you want to stop the steal? Is that what you want to do? <laughs> Give me a fucking break! Oh my god, dude! Oh Fuck. man! So, so all right, let me let me let me dial it back. Let me reel it back in. Yeah, yeah, we're we're angry right now. It's fucking as amazing. Oh, but yeah. So so but yeah. So Paul Bremer, that's my what that was my singular focus. Like, dude, do what? What do you think? Two and a half million fucking American soldiers, airmen, marine, what whatever remove a percentage that probably can't really do much more than the average American. But for the fucking right. most part, right, there's right. dudes who are going to cause a lot of problems for everybody from that point forward. Right, and right. that's what they call an insurgency. <sighs> I can't really think about when it started, uh, but it might have been a few weeks after that decision. I, I was, that right there is what probably, we saw this coming because now what you're saying is that, <sighs> Yeah, you, know, you know, somebody, I can't remember who was it that said this on the staff at the time, <clears throat> chief of staff, general Jack or Colonel Jackson Flake said that what you're going to do, what you're doing is you're pissing off a bunch of veterans that have no other place to go. He's something to that effect that have no other place to go. Who are, where else are you thinking they're going to join? Where else, where else do you think you're going to go? Who's going to give them a paycheck? Oh, oh Al-Qaeda in Iraq. Here comes yeah. Al-Sarkawi. Al-Sarkawi, exactly. <laughs> Al-Sarkawi was running hookers and fucking, and, and, you know, opium through the fucking North and, uh, and was having a fucking, his network of arms and shit through the West. So yeah, it, it was one of those things to where you're thinking, fuck dude, did you just, did you just really fucking do that? And, and I uh, just want like I still I would like I wish I don't even know if Paul Bremer's alive I really don't I don't know what the fuck he does now but I would love for him to come on or come <laughs> on maybe the U.S. Army what the fuck moment podcast I don't know just explain what logic went into that decision maybe he's done it already and I don't know it clearly hasn't gotten any attention well hang but, on let me, let me oh let me. are you following see we get, it's a good thing this is a this is a professional guest who has yeah. a whole access to computers and shit so you can <laughs> yeah, he, he, look stuff looks like right now he's still doing shit i guess he's uh you know what is he doing i don't know what he's doing man is I, he is it does he does he look into the mirror every day and think like oh how many people am i responsible for killing you know that's another thing. Can you imagine <laughs> i mean I, I, you gotta remember I, I can never get at the at that level of decision making or think what was somebody was right. at the time yeah but there, there's got there had to have been somebody looking back going Dude, are you fucking for real? Are you really fucking doing this? Uh, somebody and, had to, or somebody. somebody to. Well, it, look what happened to Shinseki. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's the problem, right? Because everyone's, especially when you get. That's a good point you bring up, because this is the same thing I see. You know, careerist in the military, right? I think you see it more with officers because you know, whatever things are just tied more to them as they progress up right there's a fear to a, to their to the career at that point to make an interview. yeah so it's like once you once if, if you're fortunate enough to hit that 06 mark from that point on you're in that careerist mentality and no one wants to say no and that's ultimately how you get 20 years of a failed fucking war in afghanistan and you turned it right over to the team you had just fucking kicked out and said here have it back Right. Because everyone comes in and I know it was like a Netflix movie, but that Brad Pitt movie is a perfect example. Every four star that came in. I got it. I got it. This, I got it right here. here. I got it. Nobody would rather just say, hold on. I don't got it. Yeah. And I don't know what the fuck we're going to do, but what we're doing isn't going to work. So how the fuck do we get that? How do we get out of this? No one ever does that anymore. No one ever does that at all. And, and if you talk about getting out of it, you're looked upon as uh, you're admitting oh it, well it ties into our ethos right yeah you yeah. will never admit defeat yeah yeah exactly. like, it's part of the fucking warrior ethos you we train will. these fucking kids to say every day at basic training we, we're not gonna i will never that. accept defeat i never accept defeat not only that but if you uh if you do say defeat then you're a fucked up leader and you should you need to get exactly uh, Look, you know what that's a, the warrior on ethos is great in a fucking direct action engagement fine got it but when we're in the overall strategic realm Look, how about we save Joe and Jane from fucking getting killed by saying, you know what? We need some, we need to figure, we need to take a step back. We need to take a good old tactical pause and figure out what the fuck we're doing. No, we don't do that. We're just like, oh, well, you know, the next guy will be here in nine months. Make sure your awards are in. Remember, <laughs> Bronze Stars for 60% of you. <laughs> Bronze Star. And, and, fucking A, man. And, and, if you, and if you deployed and got an award downrange, your PCS award can't be, you know, uh, <laughs> you don't get a PCS award. That's another shit we're seeing in the at, at Army WTF moments too in the inbox. So, mm, so I get back to, so I get back to, you know, I finish all that stuff first Army. There, I, I got, I got put on a detail because I got in trouble. I got, I popped off to a, to a, one of the platoon sergeants. 
I mean, you never really served if you didn't. So that's yeah, cool. Right. At, least so, we, at least we authenticated your service. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we did the we did the, the the Paul Bremer to the Iraqi government uh, shift uh, convoy. So 500 miles, you know, about 80 pieces of equipment we rolled. Um, and I was in charge of the um, of the security element, and uh, and so I, I, you know, 48 hours, you know, I think it was like so, ah, I would say like oh, more 72 hours out before we rolled out. I, I grabbed a couple of gun truck kids and we started doing our Mad Max modifications to our vehicles and shit. Um, so that way, you know, we can at least provide some sort of gun truck because we didn't have 1025s, we didn't have MRAPs, we didn't have any of that shit. We had thin skinned vehicles or no skin vehicles. I had a, I had a vehicle that had no door because a it was freaking hot as hell and 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 I, I wanted to carry my weapon across with me. And so I drove with one hand the whole way, and then I had a, um, I had a, <laughs> I had a uh, division, part of the division med team uh, as my TC, and he was just like, he was so cute, just so cute trying to be all <laughs> little pistol like I'm gonna get him, sorry. I'm like, yeah, you go get him, sir, go get him, you know, <laughs> just, just start, just start, just start shooting when you see some, you know, something coming towards the truck. <laughs> um, and so, so we get back and and um. I uh, was pissed off because I, I vented and the platoon sergeant heard me. I was venting about how the headquarter commandant at Arif John was flat dicking on some shit and we should have been rolling out of here earlier now because of, you know, incompetence. Uh, and we have to go back and tell the families that we deployed back. I said, I'm AMO qualified. I'm, I'm AMC live qualified. What is the issue to get us back? I'll get us the fuck back. And then this, you know, Toon Star walks up to me, tanker guy. He's like, oh, so you're going to get us back, huh? I would tell you what, how about you, uh, you're going to, you, matter of fact, uh, they're looking for a detail for out of Camp Buring to, 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 to get to do some of the vehicles from uh, first brigade and, and we're going to change them out. So guess, guess who's in charge of that? You, you, you know, you know, you know, supply, right? You, you owe that big brag badness, you know, you, you go. So I, I got extended again, my fucking mouth. And, um, I was, camp, I was a camp hearing doing the, uh, the lateral transfer of up armored vehicles uh, to all, you know, from, from the, the division brigades to the 10th mountain division that ironically the same 10th mountain division that was providing assistance and support with us at my first rotation in Iraq, they were there. They're like, Ken, fucking say Siebert, bro, what are you doing, man? And then they, Hey, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> I got in trouble. And, and then <laughs> the G4 star major comes down. It's like, God damn, Ramos, you just can't shut up. I'm like, this motherfucker pissed me off. And, like, all right, well, here's a mission. You got to do this and make sure you do a lateral transfer. So I transferred, I was the NCOIC for first armor division to laterally transfer all the up armored equipment to the 10th mountain division and that's that's our, and nice. you know, fucking, you know, rank has his privileges, I guess, when you got a big fucking mouth. And so, <laughs> so we did that. And then I, you know, and I got back to, uh, to Germany and then, you know, they were like freaking, all right, it's time to go back to brag. You know, your, your, your time is done. I got offered a couple of first arm positions, which I got scared not to take them. Oh, I was scared. I was, uh, I was threatened. I don't want to say threatened, but I was like, if you do this job, you'll never make Sergeant Major. You take this job, you'll never do this. And I should have taken them because it was... We have such a weird way of mentoring NCOs. Yeah, yeah we do. We do. <laughs> and that also pisses me off because <laughs> the individuals that took the job that I didn't take ended up fucking getting promoted to Sergeant Major. You know what I mean? Earlier than me. So I was like, this fucking blows, dude. So, you know, I could have been, <laughs> been a first sergeant of the second ACR and uh, in, 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 in pulled some first sergeant time, or I could have been a, um, an, a, uh, they were, they wanted me to make me a, um, a first sergeant of a, of a UAV company out of, with the MI unit. And uh, that'd have been cool. Yeah, exactly. Get back there. Yeah, I call back to brag. Hey, can I do this? You're fucked up. If you do, you're <laughs> <laughs> betraying the regiment. If you do this and you're only a fucking sergeant first class, and you think you're going to fuck it. They're going to frock me. You can't do that. And, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I can't believe I'm getting my ass chewed out for professional. Okay, whatever. Right, I guess we'll go back to brag. So I get back to brag and I can, I, I, again, what's my mouth? I like to fucking, you know, sometimes my, you know, because English is a second language to me. I, I'm a wreck <laughs> a lot of shit. So I was like, really, Sergeant Major? You were going to like fucking PNG my ass to fucking take a first sergeant job? You don't even want that job. It's fucking big army. You don't want that shit. I go, but God damn, it was a first sergeant. You wouldn't have fucking made it. I said, it's a first sergeant time as a sergeant first class. Brocked as an E8 doesn't count. That's not the point. Anyways, we need to- <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, he got mad at me one time because I went on detail for, uh, I, I supported uh, Robin Sage and it became a point where we were supporting Robin Sage uh, which is the culmination exercise for the special forces qualification course. And uh, actually, hold on. I've read the fade observer. It's actually a training event to unleash special forces soldiers against the American population. Are you here to dispute that, sir? Is that what you're going to say? 
I'm actually, I'm actually yes here to totally, <laughs> totally laugh and troll anybody who believes that QAnon bullshit, <laughs> only because of the fact they're so per- the fear porn shit. <laughs> the politics, come on. Anyways, f- enough about me. Shit. Anyways, so <laughs> I, <laughs> so I. <laughs> So I get back to Bragg. So they, they assigned me to the unit that was involved, uh, the battalion, the side battalion that was involved in Africa, uh, West Africa, uh, East Africa and West Africa. And, and I got hooked. I mean, I got there and, uh, you know, my time there in Africa was spent uh, supporting uh, special operations units there on the ground. And uh, also I was also the, uh, the uh, OIC of a military information support team, which every embassy, no, okay. Now here's some QAnon shit. Oh, most, most embassies have, special operations forces assigned to the embassy, either TDY or per or PCS there to do whatever. So me, my job was there to, was to message the Ethiopian populace and message oh, nice. the, the Kenyan populace, the Somali populace and all that, working with the ambassador. The ambassador was the approval authority. So I can actually go to the ambassador and say, hey, sir, look at this. And he could go, yeah. And then I could go, ha ha, screw off, brag, you know, ha ha. You know, Are some, you the one that came up with all the emails about like the the lottery in Nigeria and shit, and you, you, please well, contact us to claim your prize and all. It's same, like a that, big giant fishing operation. That same, that same, that same. I don't know comments there, but I I, I am uh, my other roles in Nigerian prints when I'm off duty. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, I'm watching season. Billions right now, and I'm on season two where they're trying to. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. You value the Nigerian uh, currency, and like, yeah, oh, it's so great. I love so, it. So I got to, so I got to spend time in Africa. I think I spent more than about two years all together in Africa um, to, really? to the point where, and that's the point where I, I, I had an Ethiopian driver's license. I, I mean, my, oh, I, my math passport was, I've been to Africa more than some people say they like to go to Africa. I, I love, was going to say, I you're love, probably like, you're probably rich in Africa for real. Oh man. I tell you what, Jesus. if I could go back, I, I picked up the language there, Amharic, which oh, is wow. the thousand year old Ethiopian uh, language and I picked up Kiswahili and then a little bit of Somalinga and oh my god, dude, I loved I loved that's Africa. fucking awesome. I, I loved Africa. So really, some of the stuff there I worked mm-hmm. with the embassy, worked with some JSOC elements, worked with some uh, SOC Africa elements and uh, you know SF elements, uh, you know NSW guys. The people that I know there are still working doing some of that shit. So that that's the stuff that was fun because I got to do some of that shit. And then um, they're like, hey, you know what? You're doing such a good job. You're going to go to SOCOM. There you go. See if you're going to SOCOM. Like, SOCOM, SOCOM? Like, SOCOM, SOCOM? I'm going to real SOCOM? Yeah, like the video game SOCOM. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the video game SOCOM where I'm in Tampa yeah. and I get to go, to- <laughs> go hang out in freaking Bayshore. One everybody always asks about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that's SOCOM. So, yes, I got assigned to so- uh, U.S. SOCOM. And uh, worked some of the uh, psychological operations um, programs and stuff they had there. That obviously can't that can't be discussed because there's some of them are still in play. But there there were some uh, there was some stuff that I was doing that that was I, I here I am like I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm I'm here I am to the point to where I had a good mentor. I had a couple of mentors come down to Tampa and say, "Okay, Ken, enough. What you've been in the army forever." Yeah, I know. And uh, you've not been a first sergeant. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and it's cool. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. You have to do first sergeant time. That, that yeah, do I you, know? And I'm like, do, do I really have these? Like, no, look. He's like, do some first sergeant time. You, you know, there were some other projects too that they had me work that was part of the deal. Hey, you do this, we'll get your first sergeant job and blah, blah, blah. And they kept it a word. But I, now you talk about mentoring NCOs. These two, these, these, these guys that came down, these two CSMs that came down to talk to me were, were on point about mentorship when they they actually stopped me. They, they seized, they stopped my momentum that I thought I was doing good on, but what they saw from their point of view, I was one of the most oldest in rank master sergeants in the army for active duty at the time. And 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 still, right when I got promoted to Sergeant Major before I got out, it was still the same thing. It was like, dude, you you need to be a first sergeant because if you don't, you're gonna RCP out. And you know the tension they, control point for those at home. It means correct. you have to get out unless you progress to the next rank. Correct. And and uh, and so <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, what if I'm just like promotable and don't get pinned? You know, just I was because I like <laughs> I like being on the ground. I like being yeah, on the field. yeah. You like you like you like actually being in the army, not yeah, yeah, trying like to army. advance yeah, your yeah. career. Yeah, not and, a careerist. No. Well, yeah. And so. um so I became a first sergeant back to the same unit that I was at first uh, in ninth side battalion. I was a, I was mm. a first sergeant on op sergeant major as well. And then uh, I culminated my, my tour, uh, the same mentors. Hey, you want you to come up here and work with me to do some stuff on some projects at SWIC for 
uh, you suck recruiting, um, you know, working stuff for doctrine and, and you can help out at SWIC. I'm like, yeah, sure. And then, you know, I got picked up, I did the non-resident course and then I retired, you know, I pinned on SART major and then retired a short time after. So, you know, it was, it was, you hard. ruined it. Yeah. I, I was, I was like, I ruined, I ruined big Sarge plan. Cause I know what was going to happen, dude. If I stayed in as a SAR major, they probably would have made me a CSM. I'd probably be on, I'd probably be assigned to some freaking MP company or some shit like that. And I would have said something wrong. I would have said muck tuck. Somebody would have been offended. And, and then that'd have been it. You know what I mean? I'd have been like, dude, are you real? You know, for real. But, but no, I, I, I enjoy, I have no regrets. Um, I just, it just pisses me off. And I want to say it pisses me off. It just frustrates me that I didn't have, I wish I had more time in life, you know, 29 years up to 29 years in the army is, is a lot. And, and I, I'm so glad I didn't pull any CSM time. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't pull any of those, any of those, I don't know, just looking at now. And then of course, you know, being part of WTF moments, I, I, I saw what was, what was it like to be a CSM? Uh, there's some great CSMs out there and there's also CSMs out there that just make it totally freaking difficult just to be in the army. And so, all right, <clears throat> there's a great transition point uh, for those keeping track at home. If you've made it this far, CSMs are command sergeant majors. All right. That's what he's talking about. Uh, but <clears throat> tell us what, what the hell is army WTF moments? When did it start? I can uh, remember uh, kind of when yeah. I first saw it, but what is it? What is your, what is your role with it today? <sighs> well, U S army WTF moments first started off as a simple. I'll be right over here. I can keep going. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pour more drinks. Um, started off as a simple meme posting, you know, kind of like hey, ha, 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 joking around posts way back in January 7th, 2010. And and what it what it did is basically became kind of like a uh, like a shotgun rogue. 2010, huh? So that was Hold on, this is important for people at home. So this 2010, this was before basically Department of Defense was like, yeah, I guess we're just cool with social media. Everyone just do whatever the fuck you want. No, 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 no. See, that's the thing. Don't get me started on social on on the DoD, the <laughs> armies. Oh, are we done talking about me now? Because I'm I'm pissed. I want I want to. You're get, done. You get yeah. Right, you right. talk about whatever. Right no, now, no, right. now we're talking about WTF moments. That's what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> so, um. It was a place for soldiers to vent. It was a place for soldiers to yeah. post. It, be, it went from uh, being something to where you could post your vents and people kind of like chuckled on it. There was a couple of posts that we would post. Hey, look, this is bullshit. This is army life. Ha 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 ha. And then it started growing and it grew. And then uh, five years into it uh, was when um, uh, WTF Nation Radio was starting to kick up. And, and WTF Nation Radio was the one of the first mill i guess you would say mill podcasters to be kind of like how we do it i mean i mean i'll be honest with you the godfather of long form interview podcasting is always going to be joe rogan always yeah. joe rogan yeah. um the way he does it the way he you know he he's just a dude asking questions about other things for other dudes to know and guys yeah. know. nothing wrong with him asking a question um so the army at the time was was not really knowing how to handle it my position is i was just an admin because and this is another thing we didn't cover you know about me uh, during some of those SOCOM programs, I worked in social media exploitation. My job was to use the web, was to use social media against the enemy. And so that's that's my my Facebook presence in 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 Ken Ramos real life really hasn't really hasn't been that long. It's only been like you know since 2015. Yeah. Uh, however, my military work in social media presence is earlier is longer than that i mean since since back in 20 you know 2009 2008 um that's what was my job was at socom was part of social yeah. media exploitation and so that right there i was i was on facebook as a doing another role not being hey i'm ken you know ha. Huh. so so and, what is that though what is social media exploitation from your perspective social media exploitation is exactly what it sounds like we're using the different specific platforms to convey your message that you want to change behaviors for individuals will and and you could be you could be as nefarious as you want to conduct combat operations or you could be out in you know out in white space i guess you would say <clears throat> open so this is how the russians influence the election you know I, <laughs> you know the russians the russians um the, the, the reason why the reason why our adversaries whether it be isis uh, the ivan i was called I'm, I'm old school i mean i should have worn my wolverines t-shirt instead of my wtf t-shirt but should have but you didn't 
Yeah, well, you know, I had to rep. Um, I went UCF tonight. What's up? University of Central Florida, 2017 yeah. National Champs. What's up? Anyway. What's up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> um, didn't Daniel Tosh go there? Anyways. He uh, did. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. 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 He's from, uh, I think he's from, uh, no, he's from Tavares or Oviedo. Anyway. Yeah. I think but I went there. That's what read it. I went there is what's important. Not him. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, so basically what you're doing is that you're, that those, those at our adversaries are using social media to exploit us because they don't go through an approval process and they read the reactions of our audiences. And, Boomers. And, and, yeah, exactly. And, and, and we'll feed and cultivate that emotion with it. Well, with us, we have to go through fucking authorities. We have to go through permissions. We have to make sure this, our time, our, our social media, uh, just like our, a lot of our doctrine for a lot of stuff, it needs to fucking just, come, just needs to come off the wheel. It's just, it just needs to be redone. Our authorities need to be more, um, you know, when you hear cyber, oh, we're, we're doing oh. this. But our authorities need to be our authorities need to be either changed, adjusted, or or removed when it comes to our type of exploitation yes. against our adversaries. Um, now, where the army go back to your first que- your question about the army failing, the DoD failing in its social media policy. WTF moments. Um, one of the reasons why, and if you've taken any distance learning course of the U.S. Army and the NCOPDS system, you'll notice that. Or w- you've copied your buddies. Or you copy your buddy. You'll notice that WTF moments is now part of doctrine. Um, you will is see, it really? Oh, yeah. If you go to DLC, you go to a DLC um, page, they'll see, you'll see a soldier talking about this on WTF moments, and they'll say U.S. Army WTF <clears throat> moments. A lot of our admins are involved in some of that stuff too. I am again the admin, and it became kind of like the LNO, the director of digital outreach, to kind of like LNO, the, which is a liaison. Yeah, liaison. <laughs> there we go. He's the liaison. Yeah, the, the liaison <laughs> between between the units and all that very, stuff. Very French and formal. Yeah, au contraire. Anyways, um, and so so they so so basically units can come to me and and you know and, and I uh, our DMs uh, our WTF policy is that our inbox and our DMs are, are secured so yep. we've removed admins for reaching that for like dropping dimes on hey look look at that they post an inbox and some shit eh, don't you think like with that real quick because I know for a fact th- like there's a lot of people trolling you guys with shit that they send it yes yes yeah. unfortunately the members of U.S. Army WTF moments are either active duty. Uh, I am, I am, um, I think I'm one of two now because others, others have, you know, moved on and, and, and retired or, but I'm one of one, one of two retired. Everybody say hello to Frank. He's here to chill. What's up, buddy? Yeah, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> he just off. hopped up. He's here to chill. Anyway. Um, so, so a lot of it, a, a lot of, of our member, our admins are, um, are active members of the active duty community. So that information that comes in the inbox, oh, it's a. We'll just use as an example. Oh, so first armor division had an issue. Who's in first armor division? Oh, we're in first armor division. Yeah. We dig around. No, nope, that's not true. That's bullshit. Okay, cool. Um, we go through a lot of sourcing. Yeah. That. And, and so, and then sometimes we'll reach out to the unit, or we'll reach out to a PAO. And the PAO says, "Hey, uh, that's not true. Let me research that." Okay, you have to send two hours. And then. <laughs> It, it gets it gets adversarial it gets to the point where now um, i believe I, it i feel like overall it's probably way more good than bad but you know yes. our inbox just like how i told you about how how seeing things in the army side of the house made you look it just you just look at things different that that yeah. being in the inbox or being part of wtf moments and wtf nation radio has opened my eyes to how the army really is and i'm glad we're here i mean i'm glad that we're because all you knew was your role, right? Or right, your, you, right. you, all you knew was your lane. Right. And it's not like that. Hey, man, all I knew was I was delivering a fucking aviation traffic, air traffic control yeah. for the Balkans. And now I'm, I'm seeing the deep, dark secrets of yeah. some of the darkest shit in the army that I've ever seen. Yeah. You're like, holy crap. Real quick, for those who don't think this is a real thing, I just want you to go on, like, because some of you seem to quote Wikipedia as if it's gospel. So please go to Wikipedia, just put in the words, troll farm and let me know how many countries you come up with that actually pay to push propaganda right let me know so that's that's your homework question for the night all right uh the troll farms are a real fucking thing like it's it's, it's insane it's insane i'm i would hope we're doing it we're gonna pretend we don't because it's really mean and bad and that's offensive and but man i sure hope we are why are you saying muck tuck bro why are you saying (laughs) (laughs) oh muck tuck so so the, so the thing so the thing is is that it is 
it's basically the avenue for soldiers and an outlet for soldiers uh, and veterans and their families. And we post, just, we post news. I mean, I can honestly say we're almost becoming more of a media media environment. I mean, we have different pages too. We have, uh, you know, U.S. Army WTF moments, U.S. Army WTF moments videos, U.S. Army WTF moments memes. We have WTF Nation Radio. We have Grunts Gaming Network. We have, I mean, we have, we have other pages that are out there that are under WTF moments that nobody knows that are under WTF moments. Um, but there's our, a lot going on. How do you guys keep track of all this shit? Jesus. Yeah, you know, I have admins, and I'm also the I, I'm also the information operations guy for the for the environment. So. The Grand Admiral. The Grand Admiral, yeah. So the, <laughs> and, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a Star Wars fan. Grand Admiral Thrawn is one. Is of that my, what that's is that what that's from? Because I don't know. I've never in my life watched anything that has to do with Star Trek. So I apologize for not Star Wars reference. Not, not Star, Star Wars. Wars. Star Wars as well. Never watched any yeah. of that. So, I, the only Star Wars I ever watched was that one that came out. I was a senior in high school, 99. What was it? It was the one with Darth Maul made his appearance. Yeah, it was the episode one, the Phantom. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the only one I've ever high seen. High school that happened. I was freaking damn 99, was, bro. What's up? Class of 99. What's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you feel old, bro. Um, hey, you know, hey, you look young. That's good. You look yeah. young. I mean, right? that's, a, that's 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 our gift. Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll be 70 and still look like we're 35. Fine. Bourbon, bourbon divorces, parachute jumps, and freaking, you know, that, that's our deployment. Yeah. So hold on. Let's, let's, all right, let's get out of the military stuff. Cause now we, we've probably bored most people. And if there's anyone that's still here, all right, look, your call sign is ice. Oh uh, yeah. Which I have teased to be ice man. So yeah. I'm going to just assume it's ice man. And <sighs> I really would like to know what was it like to record or film top gun with goose <laughs> maverick funny you should, and maverick funny you should say that because um uh yeah tune in tune into uh wtf nation radio us Army wtf moments and uh and uh and memorial day weekend and you'll find out but i got that name from um again i personally was not on facebook uh until i until i got a facebook account and then i got a facebook account because i found out a, a friend of mine had taken his own life and i didn't know about it it was all over Facebook, but because I'm old and analog and, 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 you know, still read newspapers, I didn't, um, I didn't even think to get my own personal account. So when it was all over Facebook, I felt very awkward to, to ask, Hey, whatever happened to so-and-so we need all going to hang out. And they're like, dude, what are you doing, man? He, 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 you know, he took his own life and he's on, you know, it was all over Facebook. And I'm like, oh. so because I was so enveloped now, there's another thing about the, the, like you were saying, but trying to you know all you wanted to do is do soldier stuff i was so engrossed in my work i didn't take time for me to see the other shit you know what i mean i didn't take time for me to see that i had friends out there that were in need and and i didn't know and again an awkward position to sit there and, and talk about drinking beers with somebody when it was already announced on facebook that he wasn't no longer amongst us yeah so so then i had him so i made my name i saw that you know obviously it's ken ramos but ken ramos whatever whatever and, and then that's when um, I was the first arm and I saw WTF moments and I was like, what is this? What, what, what the hell is this? This is, this is funny as shit. Um, bunch of memes and shit, you know, units getting busted out. That's what I'm talking about. And I was a first arm. I, I've said this before too. I was a first arm. And at the time I saw, I was driving back from the battalion headquarters back to my company. And I saw a soldier on Gruber road on Fort Bragg. Uh, engineer kid in in his entire ASU's jump boots beret all polished up mowing a fucking lawn in the hell yeah as he fucking should oh whatever <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was fucked up that a bring back discipline that's what we need <laughs> so, well he needs to come back now raw brother paint those goddamn rocks private and exactly. flip them each time every time the sun shines on them and you better shut up and do those leg tucks. Anyways, so. <laughs> you definitely need to shut up and do your leg tucks. That's for sure. <laughs> so, so I got pissed off and submitted, hey, blah, 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 blah. You know, fuck this. This is bullshit. Oh, shit. Yeah. So you submitted that. I submitted that as a first sergeant. to. Oh, wow. Damn. My first, ooh, I feel so sneaky. Ooh. Oh. So, uh, so then, so then uh, after that, um, there were some people in the admin session that knew about me already. And they knew, they saw my input. They're like, oh, hey, ha, ha. What are you doing, man? You want to apply and you should apply. And you know, we're gonna do a, a recruiting drive and blah blah blah. And a lot of individuals, I'll just say that the WTF moments is, is like us is a is very heavy soft, um oh, yeah. heavy soft slash uh you know, well-known units uh that are members, and they all you know, I've been in the army forever, so they, they're like, Hey, yeah, we know who you are. Why don't you put an application? Blah blah blah. 
Well, I didn't know what name to put. Is this a paid position? No, hell no. We're all volunteers. Oh, I'm just kidding. You're <laughs> kidding, man. Really? Man, uh, I was say, so you're so you're kind of trying to uh, are you trying to be kind of like the ombudsman? Um, what's that word? Ombudsman. Ombudsman. Yeah, um, that that word, but unofficially, an unofficial right. ombudsman. Army ombudsman. Um, see yeah. now you got and this is where bourbon's flowing to because I can't. Yeah, RT, it's we're we're good now. Yeah. Um, um, and so so they uh, so I didn't know what name to put. Um, ombudsman. And, um, but yeah, so I was like, <laughs> yeah, 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 um. And then I was looking around and then uh, I had a, I had, you know, some, my, one of my, um, I had a book, uh, a German book open and it was, I uh, was iron and, and in iron German uh, is, is Eisen, ice. Oh, Eisen. So yeah. I, I, I made that as a fake fucking account. So Kenneth Eisen with a little ghost emblem, like you see right now, I've, I've had that same, those, those same, it was like, Oh, you people don't change your freaking, if you had the, if you had the same Facebook or, or same uh, Twitter account, maybe uh, you're, you're you're lame. Whatever, I've had that ghost shit forever. Um, and so <laughs> I I put Kenneth Eisen. Well, then when I was part of the team, when I was adminning and stuff, they're like, hey, we need to talk to Ice at Eisen. There was a, there was somebody who was stationed in Germany, and Ice is ice cream. And, you know, if you want some ice. And so, uh, and then when I was asked if I wanted to be part of the radio station to do some of the, the some of the psyop magic there. Um, the kids, the, the the station's hosts were savages, and they were like, "I I I said, fuck it, we're just gonna call you Ice." I go, "Dude, don't you know? Don't call me that. I mean, that's like, I makes me that exactly what you just said. I feel like I'm fucking Top Gun. I feel like I gotta be like Val Kilmer or something like that, and, and I gotta spike my hair up or some shit like that. I, I don't know. That's like so 80s. You, so you were like 80s heroes, Heisenberg shit. before it was Heisenberg the, <laughs> with Walter White. Yeah, with Walter White. Yeah, and so. So they um they gave me that nickname. That's how it stuck. I mean it's it's a it's a lowbrow fucking story and it's not really a big deal. But it, everybody was like, no, it's a big deal. And I'm glad we just spent five minutes on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I do have this question for you. How can I top? How, see that right there? How can I top Lee, man? I'm gonna go ahead. Go ahead. Here's how you can top it. So look, I've I've been enamored with some of the crazy shit that's come out of like World War II, right? But Going back to that patch that's on your wall, right? What does that patch mean? That is the ghost army. Please tell us what the ghost army did. If if you know, I don't know if you know. I don't know. Maybe. Oh no, I do know. I I, <laughs> I, I did a, I did a case study uh, for. Oh shit! Cool. Academy. Um, and, and I I did a threaded case study for the ghost army for. It's one. It's probably the, honestly, I've seen just about every patch. I, th- I feel like I've seen every patch in the army at this point, even the ones that have been disbanded and we'll never see again. I feel like that's the coolest fucking patch we've ever come up with. It, I really it, do. It, I'm, it, I'm being dead serious. I think it's fucking incredible. It, it is. It is one of the most interesting patches. And, and, and the thing is, is that the ghost army is not, it is, it is, if there was a father, just like how the, how SF uh, likes to claim uh, about the, um, about how do I say this? They're part of the OSS. There's some consternation between the SF community, being them being part of the OSS and OSS. What is the OSS for those who don't know? Operate. It was the Office of Strategic Services. There you the go. Precursor. The, 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 the precursor CIA. of the CIA. There you go. Right. Exactly. So, so there's some there's some back and forth between the US USSOC history historians, SF history, and all that. That that SF is part of uh, that lineage. Well, I would say I would be bold as to say that that the Ghost Army is the precursor to psyop. Um, that patch that you see behind me, that patch that you know that you see uh, that you see on my AVI, the patch that you see that that is as to me as, as significant of soft history as any other piece because their job was MILDEC, was military deception, which is the you mm-hmm. know, actions executed to deliberately mislead adversary decision makers, um, and and as to what our military friendly capabilities are. So. I actually did a deception operation in northern Iraq in in Kurdistan with with the uh, with the tent with tenth SF group. Um, that's going to be talked about later because I guess they're doing some some stuff and they're going to talk about that. But I, I participated in an event like that. For example, in Desert Storm, there was uh, psyop guys that were pretending that there was um, there was a bunch of tanks by producing tank noises. And the Ghost Army did the same thing, but they used inflatable tanks. They used inflatable artillery pieces. They How used... fucking that's fucking insane. That, that's uh, could you imagine just being the guy? All right, check this out. You're gonna be you're pretending you're gonna be um tanks and artillery pieces. 
and we're going to use these inflatable rubber ducks and you're going to inflate these up and you're going to stand here and walk around like you're a tanker. And uh, so who were they trying to fool though, back in world war two? Was it what, what were, type of surveillance? Was it just aerial surveillance that they were trying to, well, they were, what they were trying to do is they were tr- during the battle of the bulge, they were a part yeah. of, they were, they, you know, the battle of the bulge was happening. And one of the missions, the name of the unit, by the way, is, is the 23rd headquarters, special troops. That's the name of the unit. Yeah. And so basically what their mission was classified was to pretend that they were a force larger than what they were. So out of 15, they were supposed to pretend there were 15,000. The real force multiplier. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> as a matter of fact, it's one of the PSYOP monikers there. Um, it was organized as one battalion, you know, it had three company separates, a headquarters company, and each unit, you know, had a specific role. And, and it was, the, it was like the legit personification of Mildek. It was, uh, you know, or PSYOP doctrine, however you want to call it. Um, so basically they had an engineer company, which is a camouflage battalion. That was like one of the largest formations. They made, they were the ones that made the big props. Um, and they were the ones that made basically the big dummy and inflatable tanks that you'd see them, you know, you see videos of them walking around with big inflatable tanks and stuff like that. And the, the 244th signal company, they were, their primary mission was, was, was spoofing was basically bots. Like you were saying, battlefield Mm -hmm. bots. And their job was to create fictitious when well, they're not fictitious they were real they were just deceptive radio nets and and they they their job was to pretend that that there was amount of force here and amount of force there a special force there another force there to the germans who were who were trying to make the decision to keep forward during the battle of the bulge um the 406 engineer company was like the security for the whole organization but also was a part of the demolition uh, uh, to support this operation. So basically, if they needed a tank to show like it was exploding shit, then they would use these engineers to go out and boom, and then, oh shit, you know, the Germans were like, oh, Shiza, you know, here comes some freaking tanks, and it's us. The Sonic Deception Company. Speaker Monkeys. The original Speaker Monkeys, man. Sonic Deception Company. Sonic. I feel like we came up with all the cool names for shit back in World War II. We did, and and and, and because, of, <laughs> because of Muck Tuck, the Muck Tuck doctrine, we can't fucking use them anymore. Anyway, we can't do anything anymore. Everything's like anyway. a fucking feelings, like I don't know. Oh God, whatever. So so as a matter of fact, I did a I did a case study for for um for the uh, uh for the 18th Airborne Corps. And I will send that to you in the DMs. Oh yeah, I'd love to read this. This'd be good. So be good. So we can it's in it's in your DMs. Um so basically these are hey, tangled mic. I'll I'll check it out. Uh, not right now though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so these guys basically they they had to use pretty much the same thing type the tape type of um of study and meteorological uh stuff that artillery artillerists use uh, a kid told me uh, artillerist that, that term artillerist 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 was that was that uh was that g-dub who said that no it was who was it no it was just recently it was it was um shit who was it bush 43 no, it was it was somebody uh, it was somebody in the mill Twitter space that used mill artillerist as a is kind of like how an artist yeah. is. Uh, I I don't want nothing to do with that space. But, well, no one at home should either avoid it. No, no. See, I'm not going to defend them, but I'm going to defend them on some others. Anyways, so you might want to say. So their job was to impersonate divisions. So their job was impersonate the division. You know all that stuff. So that's basically, crazy. So basically, Patton. When Patton was on the move, they were at the southern portion of the bulge to fool so the was, Germans to, to think that there was they were surrounded and, and that's why the Germans didn't attack. So them. was that who who came up with that? Who who thought of that as like a tactic to employ? Was that Patton? Was that Eisenhower? Was it someone that we have no fucking clue? Who it, was, it, was, it was General Marshall. It, 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 it was, was Marshall. Okay. It was, it was our it was our army thinking. So someone like, but that's what. I, 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 I'm being I'm being very serious. I feel like everything that we peaked as a society in the United States was World War II and probably stopped right after we landed on the moon. Like, think about that stuff that we've done from a strategic like we're right. in the largest ground fucking war I, ever. We have a we it's it's literally for humanity. Some dudes for- like we're gonna come up with you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna pretend that we have this fucking force here. I need someone to come up with that. But we don't do fact, cool shit like that anymore. Fact, I need somebody to come up with something that, I don't know, you're going to have to do inflatable tanks. Could you imagine somebody getting inflatable M1 Abrams? Yes. Or, or we wouldn't do it because right. you know why we wouldn't do it? Because someone would say, 
we don't have the money. Or, it's, or be risk averse to it. They would be- It's uh, an $800 billion defense budget and someone with a straight face will tell you we don't have the money. Right, right. <laughs> Right. Exactly. Oh, my, like, oh my god like oh i swear like world war ii and just you know like i said through the 50s and into you know probably the middle of the 60s when we we did the whole space program i don't know what we've done since then other than come up with fucking this phone that has everything in human history on it and i don't know social kind of media it, kind of find it odd that we can't use the technology of the phone to go back to the moon but you know yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think, I, think we had, I think we had we barely had enough technology of a, of a digital wristwatch, an old Casio back in the fifties and sixties, and and now it's, dude, like, it's insane. So I was overheat about that shit. Yeah, I, I think it was back in September. Uh, my daughter and I we were in Chicago and we went to uh, we went to I can't remember which museum we were in, but anyway, they had this like space wing and it's talking about the Apollo missions and you know the shit that they ran into with what was it Apollo thirteen? Yeah. You start reading about that, like, because, you know, most people don't. But when you actually read the placards that are there and you're like, yeah, you, you, how the fuck did that guy, how? Why? How was he yeah. able to maintain the composure? Yeah. Uh, it, it's our, not like, oh, hey, dude, I need, you for, I need you for like 10 minutes to just really focus on. No, the dude did it for hours. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to say we're off uh, of Earth. I'm, He's I'm gonna, not on our planet. I'm gonna I'm gonna quote I'm gonna quote Lafayette Lee, man. I'm telling you, we're of a different breed these days. You know, what? we, we really about, are, you know, man. Can we talk about Lee, bro? I I, it's a good guy. I I I listened to that to that to the uh, and not not to shift the story about the ghost army. Uh, the Bless ghost. Bless your soul for putting yourself through two hours of me. Uh, no, bro, brother. I love this. <laughs> I've realized this fucking, we're already going on two hours. This is a blast. Yeah, um, no, I'm good. And and and, the, and that freaking Buffalo Trace, man. I want to be, you know. Man, this is awesome. It's a good it show. helps you sleep well at night. Yeah. And yeah. so um, I was just listening to him and, and hearing his voice as different as he is on his Twitter account. I was just, I expected it to be like how his persona, how his persona was, you know, how he has Clark Gable. Right. And so I, I expected to, to hear him talk to you like, I do declare, you know, like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to read some of his tweets. And, and, and if, if I thought Lafayette Lee sounded like this, this is what I think Lafayette Lee would sound like. I do declare noticing a lot of bow ties, telling the peasants it's time to leave Trent behind. You know, I, I thought it was, <laughs> I, I, he, cause he, cause the way he writes now. Yeah. yeah he's, he's very calculated. Very, no, it, it's very, I love the way he writes. He's no bullshit. I had, I've seen some, somebody on the TL say, well, he's using Lafayette. He's using Clark Gable from Gone with the Wind, blah, 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 blah. And, and it has a, it almost has like a, I can't, I have to dig it up, but I, I'll look for it. I think, I think Goon Twitter j- dragged his ass for saying it, but um, said, said that, that it has a, a racist connotation. I'm going to tell you what about Clark Gable. Okay. Clark Gable. You know why? Hold on. Before you say that, you know why they're probably trying to say it has a racist connotation because he describes himself as a Southern ag- agrarian. Well, that, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the only reason. Like they, they've demonized those words. Anything Southern, Southern has right. to be racist, well, right? Let me tell you about, let me tell you about Ken Ramos. And there's some other stuff here that you're breaking. Some <laughs> Since we already talked about my educational background. Lafayette Lee is probably like, I do declare that Ken Ramos. I got like 17 degrees from Princeton. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I feel like but, my, camera's, my, family, my camera's kicking out. What's going on here? All right, anyway, you're good, but mine... Yeah, you're, you're, but anyway, as long as the audio is fine, I don't really care. Um, I don't look like a Ramos, right? So no, you don't. Do do the math. Um, yeah, uh, all my family except for me, and my mom look like Danny Trejo. Okay, so <laughs> so it, it, it obviously I'm mixed. Um, I do declare that some of my family heritage is from is from the South. You know what I mean? So uh, it, it's uh oh shit, where'd you go? I'm just trying to reboot the old video. Oh, there gotcha. we go. See if that works. All right, cool. I was like, oh shit. No, um, no, we're still here. As long as you can hear me, it's fine. The yeah. audio is all I care about. Most people listen, they don't watch. So I, ha- I have I have my some of my familiar genes are from the southern territories. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So so for when Lafayette Lee talks about some of the stuff when it comes to the issues of race and all that, and he has his his AVI as Clark Gable. What people don't know about Clark Gable, Clark Gable was one of the the, lar- the biggest, biggest advocates for no bullshit, no racist bullshit. He hated when he was filming his, some of his films, he didn't like the fact that there was a whites and a colored section for the studios. He demanded that that shit get taken down. When some of his movies were released, 
there was a, I think it was in Atlanta. Um, that there was, that there was no, there was, they, they weren't, he was pissed off because they weren't allowing certain members of the cast to, to be, to be there for the premiere. And he refused to do it because of their, the color of their skin. Wasn't that crazy? Um, like, yeah, and, you know so, what? And for those who don't, who didn't listen last week. Um, so Lafayette Lee is a Twitter account. Obviously it's not his name, but he's partisan underscore O on Twitter. So if you don't want, if, you, if you're not a Twitter member or whatever, but if it's something that interests you, go on to the twitter.com, obviously, and look up the account partisan underscore O. That is Lafayette Lee. Just read his stuff. Um, but I would say he, he may, that may not have been his intent behind it, but I would say if anyone probably put that much thought into executing their online persona or their, as you say, their AVI, right. he probably took that into account. Yeah, I, I I would say the same. I would I would. Probably- I know the dude. He's he's definitely probably the, like he he's. If anyone would try to uh, affix the the racist label to him, he's not the one to do that to. No, 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 <laughs> <Hell> no, <laughs> no, no, no. I've looked, and, and, and that's the thing. The dude, the dude's a great fucking man. He's a great I'm man. Not, and being being a of of a Latino myself, I don't see in those eyes. See, that's what pisses me off about when we talk when he brought up the the BPOC or the Latinx Latinx. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, oh okay. Julio and, Rosas does a great and, thing about that. And you see, and you've seen me go off on people for using Latinx. And yeah. So, so I, I don't see that shit in those eyes. I look at it from Lafayette Lee being the man that he is, and spouting the wisdom. And he's not fucking lying. One of the biggest things, like we were talking about, how California has gone from its, from its original, yeah. or how how it's gotten bad. It, you're right. It's it's. I mean, I, I don't want to quote Joe Rogan again, but I'm gonna do it. When he had the video. Well, hell, you don't have to have to look at Joe Rogan shit. You can just look at half the stuff you've seen about the um, the cargo trains being robbed and all that trash it's being moved. Isn't, it, isn't that crazy? Yeah, it just, it's just like, I got pissed we're going, off. We're going back to like 170 years ago. Right, right exactly. <laughs> what do we need to do? Do we have guys with Winchesters? I could just see me. Yes. You, <laughs> That's a, you know, I think our, our, our good buddy, oh, man, practice. fucking Tap said that. Tap's like, we need to return to the time where we had, uh, yeah, we had fucking... Winch- Arm train guards. Yeah, let's, let's get Braxton McCoy on here and let's get a freaking get a <laughs> Winchester's. I'm, I'm game for that. You're going to see a guy with a cowboy hat and me and a sombrero right there guarding the freaking train. So, to go back, what I was saying is that what people don't realize is that I, because of my familial background, like I said, I do have fem, I do have a white side of me, obviously, because mm-hmm. I'm white. Um, that came from, uh, you know, the South. And so that side right there in migrating to California through the the lore of the oki is like i like to say you know back in the day when i was younger we made we made we didn't call them rednecks we called them okies in california you didn't call them rednecks you didn't you didn't call them that and these were individuals that moved to the west that moved to california for a better life because texas and oklahoma were were not as free as they said they were and so uh, when everyone's like well you know texas this and texas that i'm gonna tell you right now i have fam- familiar proof from proof that they they went from Texas, they went from through Arkansas, through Alabama, through all that, and got to California because California, like I was telling on my podcast, was, uh, you know, just, just recently, is that my dad used to be able to have a, a forty five caliber. He's you know he you know he's fucking nineteen eleven. You know I guess you call him a fud now, um, <laughs> but he but he'd have a, he'd have a pistol, either an old Smith and Wesson revolver in the glove compartment or a, a nineteen eleven on the da- on the dashboard in California, open public. Nobody would. My, my dad was the same way, but this was Florida. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and so when people say, "Oh, don't, don't, uh, don't California my Texas," what are you talking about? You don't Texas? You had immigrants. I guess you would say not immigrants, but Texas people moving to California for it's more liberal. And when I mean liberal, I mean more freedom uh, when it came to Second Amendment. When it came to uh, it was supposed to be right, like yeah, exactly. at, at some started. point, it fucking went it, off the fucking exit. It went off the rail. So now, oh my God. these kids, these idiots that couldn't stand their parents from Texas, are moving back to Texas. So in a way, when people say "Don't, don't California my Texas," it's probably more than likely the descendants of the individuals that moved to California from Texas to begin with. So. A lot it's of the so shit weird, that man. the way lot the way Lee the way he said it on your podcast was bro I I was like yes and and I'm I'm speaking as Latino I'm not, I'm I'm not carrying no uh, agenda from you know La Raza or or you know the Azatlan crew but no or, I, I I feel like I don't I don't you and I have never had a conversation about politics we've never discussed them honestly a hundred percent I don't give a fuck. 
But I would just say you come from the perspective of someone who was raised to respect traditions in the country, yes. respect what the country's provided you and your family, yes. And yes. an obligation of service. And yep. then also from the perspective of your role in its military and in the country overall as a whole. Right. So right. whatever you feel politically, it's not, it, it doesn't fucking matter to me. I don't care. Like you've, you've checked every box in terms of someone who should be considered as a serious person when it comes to whatever your beliefs are. You could be the most left-wing motherfucker in the world or the most right-wing. Either way, you've had enough skin in the fucking game to be validated when it comes to your opinions. And that's what ma- that's what means something to me. Right. Someone from either side who just spouts off shit that they're supposed to feel like they need to believe because of whatever influence they've had, I don't take that very seriously. But if you're someone who your background's perfect, right? A, a, a son of immigrants served for fucking damn near 30 years in the fucking army, rose to the highest possible rank it, you could before being forced out. <laughs> um, yeah. it, it, but just yeah. doing all your thing, whatever your beliefs were solidified or, you know, decided along the way, great. Tell me about that experience because that's what matters. You're fucking, who you vote for, I don't give a fuck. Like none of that shit matters. It, it, you're right because I'll be honest with you. I have had I have had members on the Latino side, family members on the Latino side that are that are not that are of conservatism. Yeah, more, more conservative than you think. Um, I feel you, like a, a lot, especially where I came from in Florida. I feel like. There's a lot of Puerto Ricans who came in Central Florida who come from New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, like a huge exodus. Like the New York, the Cubans. Yeah, well, the Cubans in Southern Florida, definitely very different. But I would say the Puerto Ricans who come from the island of Puerto Rico to Florida, and specifically Orlando, because let's be honest, Orlando is Orange County, Orlando. It's a very blue section of the state. I lived in. uh... I live in Brandon. Uh, um, okay, so in Tampa. Uh, Rico, Tampa area. Yeah, in your Tampa area, right? So, and then the Puerto Ricans who come from New York, these two factions are very, very, very different. Yeah, they are. They're both Puerto Rican origin, but they are entirely separate people, right? Um, I would say the ones who come from the state of New York, as opposed to the island of Puerto Rico, are more conservative. Yeah, I, that's I, I, why they're leaving New York. Right, I, and the same and the same thing. Uh, my family uh, on, on Latino. I, I am a Mexican. My my birth certificate says race of father Mexican. So my mm-hmm. dad, uh, my dad is from Mexico, and and there is how a, old was he when he got here? Uh, well, see. See, here's a, here's another one. Well, you're, you're hearing more shit. You're breaking, breaking. <laughs> it's you what might, we do. We break might, news. Might. There will be news, not yeah. bourbon news. <laughs> <laughs> he, is, he is my biological father and he passed away when I was six years old. And so my mom mm. married another Mexican. Damn. Okay. Well, at least she, you know, so, yeah, she's the brown, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, but my point is that, is that he is from, you know, my biological father is from Guadalajara. He's from this, you know, the, yeah. He, 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 my family is is got a you know has, has an indigenous uh, and slash a Spaniard like um, you know uh, how do I say this? It was more like a hereditary thing between the indigenous and 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 Spaniard. Ah, we all know what Cortez did. We all know what fucking happened between the Aztecs and all that. So that's where my that's where my my somewhat different you know features of being a little, so like, I'll get asked, dude, are you like are you like freaking are you like Indian or mixed with Indian? I'm like oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, my my family, my grandmother was straight, you know, freaking, you know, Aztec woman. She 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 had the indigenous features. She she was an indigenous. So, I didn't look. I I don't I don't look at anybody how they get here. I mean, I, don't, I actually I do. They get here. They're not from. They're not from Mexico. They're they they are Mexican, and and they get here and they're born here. And then the next thing you know, they just adopt a weird way, a weird mentality. That if they were to go back to where my family's from in Guadalajara, you know, in, in the you know in Jalisco, you're, you're kind of like, uh, what the what are you doing? Is it wow? Why are you even acting like that? Where are you getting this shit from? And then, you know, be real, be yourself, be your fan. You know, be you know. Yeah. So, so to me, it's, it's really hard. And like I said, I was raised, like you said, I was raised as a reason to, to think reasonably about things. I've, I have voted on every spectrum, yep, uh, same. Republican, Democrat, 
uh, libertarian, uh, independent. I, I voted all that spectrum too because I I, I see an, a, a candidate. Yep, they're gonna big the- anti Dan Crenshaw account right now though. Just saying. <sighs> you know, I'll be honest with you. I really. I, I mean, he's I don't. He's not I, very I good really, in the public space though. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I, I never, he never really caught on with me. I, I, I like, I get it, and I mean, and, I mean, and trust me, I can understand the allure of the American people, where they they want to put a lot of stock in, like, oh, veteran, special operations guy, like he must be everything that we want. Uh, but I'm just trying to figure out why his people continue to put him in front of his constituents. Now, maybe maybe he's obligated to do certain things, but that yeah. guy has no empathy. I love your disdain for his constituents. I'm gonna tell you what right now. Seeing that what guy he did in that town hall meeting, I fucking loved it because I think all politicians. Now let's just not get started on, on Lauren Boebert either, because then you know, freaking. I haven't seen her do anything other than tweet, so I don't know. Well, I don't I, follow her because I'm not really interested. I, I, I'm just not. Well, my my biggest thing is that is that I think a lot of our politicians need to stand up like that in front of, of town halls and, 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 and stand their front. Yeah, but if you're going to do it, fine. I'm a hall for it, but try to at least learn empathy before you do that. I'm going to be honest with you. That's right. That right there is a, is a self-select. Uh, that's how you're going to get your ass voted out. Let, let them do it. Let, let them do that. It really it's, is right. Like, I, let's do it. and I thought the best clip, the clip that showed up today was one of, uh, I can't remember who the guy was, but he's like, he admitted it. He's like, look, I just wanted to give you a chance to answer. I'm actively working against you. I right. represent this specific district. Right. And I was like, that's awesome. But yeah, like he would not stand up and say that if this dude had not given him the opportunity to do it. You know what I mean? Like you're, you are purposely proving why people have doubts and questions about you. Right. Like you're literally doing it every time you answer. Exactly. exactly. Not to mention the fact that if you can't articulate something simple and then say, don't question my faith. Yeah. But then you also, you're sitting there with like this, like this cloak of why am I here? Like every word you say sounds like you hate where you're at right now. You know what I mean? Like that's just, to me, that that's why I would just, who that is one of his handlers is allowing him to go out and not fix that. Be like, look, Hey, motherfucker, you need the next time you feel the question, stop acting like you hate being there. You need to act the opposite. Yeah, that's something too. It's like <laughs> it has some enthusiasm and shit. Act like you really give a fuck. Yeah. So look that's how we know Dan Crenshaw slash Dan Crenshaw. I, Dan I got, Crenshaw is a fucking phony. All right. I, I got, I got, I got somewhat some shit because, um, the WTF accounts a little bit more rogue now. I wouldn't say rogue, but a little bit more whatever. Uh, at the time, we were trying to be a, on a singular message and not piss off politicians. But I had he had a green screen up, and I was gonna have him like in some gay porn or something like that, and <laughs> have it behind him on his freaking green screen that he had up. But I got told, hey, look, dude, we're not we're not attacking politicians. Well, now that we, <laughs> now that WTF moments is not really not giving a fuck then that about some shit, then we just decided to post away. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm gonna. I'm going to do, I'm going to do this uh, and, and, and whatever. And then I'm like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. I'm like, okay, fine. I won't do it. So I didn't do it, but yeah, you, you know, some of the, some of the politicians that we have right now, and I'll be honest with you, this is, uh, this is not a fucking, this is not, this is not a simp on Joe Kent, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of like, I mean, I simp on him all day. I'm just saying it, I'll be honest with you. Uh, whatever you say, I'll put it in the chat right now so you can see it. What's up? Yeah. yeah what's up? Um, <laughs> <laughs> he needs to come on. You know what? He came on to your, podcast first multiple times and, and and i'm still you know if you go back honest if actually if you go back before he declared he was on when he still had the long flowing jesus locks yes he did he had yeah some. so he's been on he's been on a few times joe's a good guy he's a great man yeah, Love exactly. him. Love i can't wait for that. him to i can't wait for you joe to come on to wtf nation radio and us army wtf moments i mean you were just saying all right i'll, 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 I'll text brother. him i'll text him and tell him to do it if he does it that's on him i'm but just breaking the balls he, he should though yeah, he, he is. Uh, he is. No, he should because overall, I mean, it is the army, right? Right. Joe well, is an army guy. I, I, well, let's just fucking just rag on. Let's just rag on Twitter, people, man. Fuck, dude. This is this is this is one of those things. That I gets- just want people that are listening though to understand who we're talking about. That's my only thing. That's why I don't get into the fucking Twitter well, shit too much. I, I I I put out like, hey, if you are on Twitter, here's an account you should follow, like partisan o underscore o right. with Lee. Right. You obviously, you know, but for the most part, I, I, this isn't a Twitter podcast. I don't no, give a fuck about Twitter. I really don't. I don't well, care. I just, I just say that I'll just say this, that there are, 
there are specifics to the to your listening audience. There are yes. specific individuals that will use their military position and, and, and use and flex it on Twitter more than they would do themselves in front of their own soldiers. Yeah, and that's I mean that is that is that's a what, problem. That, that is that, a problem, what, and I I just. And I know that's another thing where I don't know. So I, I want your insight on this because yeah, this may be a little uh, behind or the scenes or what was it? Sure. Uh, it's not, is it? Pulling the curtain back. Is it behind baseball? No, there's like a baseball it, phrase. Inside baseball. Inside baseball. That's inside the baseball. phrase I'm looking for, right? So this may be a little inside baseball for people and you can fucking Go turn Dodgers. it off, right? You can turn it off. But I went and mentioned, hey, there was a decision point for the department of defense when it came down to social media right it was like yo we're not going to do this or we're going to just let everybody fucking do it and that was around 2012 right yeah how about that yeah so do you think this is what they envisioned um i think i think what the dod did was i think the R, i would say the army too because that's really all I care about. Honestly, I don't fucking follow the Navy or the Air Force yeah, or the Marine. I don't give a shit about those accounts. They're dorks. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, because here's the thing with the army. Is the army here's the thing? I laugh at accounts that will drag somebody on social media, pick your platform, that will sit there and post screenshots and get pissed off about what somebody said. However, that same individual will be posting just as bad or maybe even worse shit on social media. And I, I'm like, you know, you can't get mad at somebody posting to WTF moments, even though you're a shit poster yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so yeah. that's that's the thing. The 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 whole thing with the social media is going to get out of control when we start deciding who is considered an extremist and who is not considered an extremist to whoever's bar level of platform. Is it going to be some chode on social media that says that person is an extremist? He's an extremist. And then that's when the army looks into it. Or is it going to be something that is a legit individual that the army or the, or the feds have a legit case that that person is an extremist, then go into, you know what I mean? It just, well, I mean, my biggest issue Pandora's is I, box. I have a real problem with, because you obviously preceded me in the military and you would be able to speak to this even better, but I know my experience. So that's what I base it off of. Um, <clears throat> depending on what level you find yourself working in post initial entry training, right? Basic training, AIT, where you learn your job for the most part, if you see in your military career, an Oh four and Oh five, a major or Lieutenant Colonel, that's a fucking life changing moment for that day. Right. Exactly. Usually. Right. Exactly. Now, if you find yourself in a staff environment, yeah, yep. it's, a much, it's a much more normal interaction. And right. if you're in the HHC of that staff, then yeah, you might interact with these individuals way more often. Right. But for the most part, we go back to big army. You're for the most part, your daily interactions are limited to the most senior person being a fucking captain. an O3, three. Right. 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 My problem with Twitter specifically is that there are anonymous, anonymous, lower enlisted and lower officers. Well, hold on. I'm not supposed to say lower. I'm supposed to say junior, junior enlisted junior. and junior non-commissioned officer accounts who routinely have the ear of the most senior generals in our fucking army. Verified general accounts in our army. Two, three stars. That's a fucking problem. That's a problem. But now, is it, it, problem, it, it, is it a problem of it, access, or is it a problem that they that they even communicate with them? Like you have the audacity to communicate with them. No, something. I don't. I don't. You know, I don't care about communications. I care about it when it's publicly put off. Like you guys are some sort of fucking peers all of a sudden. Yeah, that's that's the problem. problem. Because you know what? At the end of the day, if we're trying to adhere to the the good order and discipline. A fucking E6 in the United States Army has no business interacting on a friendly basis with a fucking O9. Let's put let's just be honest with it, yeah. right? And if they should, it should be on some sort of formal channel you know, where I've seen, the chain of command is actually right. involved. And I've seen I've seen the spectrum go up and down on on, on Yeah, on, yeah. On, uh, I, I think we've watched a lot play out over the last yeah. 6 months when it comes to that. <laughs> right? You've seen that spectrum going up and down with some innocent stuff. Hey, hey, Sergeant Major, you were there at my this, and I appreciate you giving me that coin. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. 
interaction like that is 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 fucking that's 100 yeah that's, 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 that's an cool. interaction that's you just acknowledging a fucking positive yeah. moment in a yeah career. exactly I, I love it when the babies uh you know praise the olds and 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 thank them for 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 being there for their mentorship but on the same foot uh, that's that that little shit stick better not be fucking going off on a fucking lieutenant general or a colonel. You need to do this, sir. You better yeah. do this, sir. Yeah. Let me tell you, someone who's been sir. in the military or the army for uh, long enough to not know exactly anything other than the fucking rank right. structure. Right. Like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You don't know culture. You don't know. You don't know. You anything. know this. And I'm thinking you're talking to somebody who's got years, decades over you. And I know for a fact, you would never fucking say this. Not in person. To their face. Absolutely not. That's that. But that stop right there. That's my thing. That's, that's, that is the moment right there, right? Because I've de- I've found my shit myself into some shit with Twitter and tagging the wrong people going back 10 years ago, right? I'll tell this story. Hey, you want to break news? Let's break some fucking news, right? So here I am. No shit. 2011, I'm at Fort Knox. We are doing LTC, which at the time was the mission for... It was a program to catch up ROTC, ROTC students who did not join the program in their freshman year or their sophomore year. And it gave them an opportunity to kind of fast track. It was a 28 day course to get caught up and they would start over in their next school semester as an MS3. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Fort Knox, 2011. They put us, because we were all drill sergeants, they put us in barracks on Fort Knox that were during BRAC, right? The, Oh, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What, what is that? The base realignment and closure. Base realignment and closure. Yeah. So these, these barracks were all identified to be raised, knocking them all fucking down. They're not, they're, they're not suitable for living in. Well, wait a minute. Here comes this mission and here come all these drill sergeants and there's fucking support elements and we need somewhere to put them. I know. Let's put them here. All right. No, I don't have my original Twitter account, right? I've had a Twitter account since 2009. I don't have that original one anymore. But if it did exist, you could go back <laughs> and look where I tagged at the time. I did this. I tagged at U.S. Army because that account's been around forever. Um, and I just I just did a walkthrough of our barracks. Oh, man. Oh, my. The biggest thing I think that got their attention was the showers. There was such a fucking insect infestation in our showers. Oh, yeah. And I'm talking about like shit you don't see. Like, I don't know where these insects came from. Colors I'd never fucking seen before. And I'm from fucking Florida, right? <laughs> I see a lot of shit in my showers just on a daily basis waking up. There was some shit, right? Right. Conditions were really bad. Like, And again, these, these specific barracks on Fort Knox were identified to be knocked down, right? So I tagged it. Bro, within eight hours, I had... The post sergeant major, not a big deal, right? Yeah. But then I had the section sergeant major who was over Fort Knox. It was a two star command sergeant major. And then I had the actual US Army four star sergeant major himself. All three of them come down, address my battalion sergeant major. So here was the best part. Here's what I, uh, here's my favorite part about this, this story because my battalion sergeant major. I did not like him. He was not drill sergeant qualified. He never did anything within us. And so he just had a real bad reputation because he was very standoffish and kind of never really want to integrate with the actual drill sergeants. Right. He was just just that dude at the time on Fort Knox, he was living in the hotel while all of his soldiers, all of his drill sergeants, all of his first sergeants were all living in these barracks. Oh shit! <laughs> right? That's, yeah. So here's where it gets great. Here's where oh, it gets man. great. Yeah. I see this is going. Yeah, exactly. I know you do. So these three fu- from from a from the the post star major, the two star, and all the fucking star major of the army at the time. Well, the sergeant major of Tradoc. Let me be on it. Like, let me be clear. It wasn't the sergeant major of the army. It was the sergeant major of Tradoc. All those guys came down at the time. Pulled me into a room, asked me about everything. I'm sitting there, you know, parade rest forever, talking about it, right? Everyone's like, all right, well, we're going to call your sergeant major in at this point. We're going to talk to him. And I'm like, all right, cool. So they, they pull this fucker in and I, I leave at that point. The next day, guess who moved in with us into the barracks? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, Dude, so, I, so let's not fucking fix the barracks, but let's fucking... Oh, uh, see, that's no, that's where you're going, right? Right. So, no, right. 
I won't, I'm not going to say his name. His name is not worthy of it, but yeah. So good old Sergeant major, whatever he moves in with us into the basement of these barracks. And then we had the longest fucking GI party ever after that. Oh so it was like a plus. I was like, I did a good thing by bringing attention to it. But then also it was like, Oh my God, I do 12 hours of just fucking cleaning. So why, did have, <laughs> but why does there have to be drama about that shit? That's what pisses me off. It's like, you got caught. You got called, you got caught, go busted. You know, it's nothing to, I, I, I've always, a lot of the WTF nation uh, posts that we post, um, we, we pay attention to the post because usually uh, we look at who, uh, who, who's the, who's the one that sent it out. And then we'll get like, what, what was it? I think it was like last week. We got, we got some angry, we got some angry inbox comments from <laughs> PAOs and some CSMs and, they were all pissed off because we posted some shit. And we're like, oh, well, it's a, did you say that or not? Didn't, it's not <laughs> actually, it's like, yeah, why are you going right. off on us? You know, we were the right. one that posted the shit that you that you said, you know, and, and you can't sit there. And that's the thing. Go back to what I was saying. You can't sit there with one persona saying that you're all about fucking people first and all this other bullshit. And then be and then be toxic as fuck to your soldiers, you know, in the back end, you know, it, 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 yeah. I, I, I want if it gets to, if it gets, if it's got to get posted and you're getting mad about it getting posted, why are you getting fucking mad, dude? Just fix yeah. it. Or, or why did you get in that position to begin with? I right. always get, the, I always get the, you're an oath breaker. Yeah, I can't believe oh, you. Did this. But, but see, you're that's what my major. point was. You know, the, the, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh. my point was that was the power of social media 11 years ago. Right. And I don't know. I don't, I'm not, and I didn't, no, I didn't do a congressional. I didn't do anything crazy. All I did, I literally, tweeted it no one knew who i was all i did was tweet it and i put at u.s army at the time i remember it clear as fucking day yeah i never advertised myself as i'm drill sergeant whatever and no i'm no i was my i was just a dude right <laughs> so the only reason you knew i was in the army is because i tweeted it at them they they messaged me called me and it followed up and within like i said 24 hours that shit all happened which if, if you know, if, I felt pretty good about and be honest, I felt took, pretty good about, but if that's what it took, I'll be honest with you. Social media has now become the digital congressional Con look, right? You just ragged on Dan Crenshaw, right? You yep. honestly think about him working on your shit. Think about him working on your issues. If he oh, was your he? congressman, would he exactly what would, know, he? would he would be like, he'd be like, don't question my faith or, or yeah. you know, <laughs> let me do another green screen. You know what I mean? After all, I am a seal. After <laughs> I, I mean, I am a seal. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. So no, but that's that I, I bring it full circle. That's what I come back to because like I'm all for accessibility, but Twitter is not the channel. And I go back in hindsight and I was, man, I was a fucking 28 year old fucking E6 drill star and just pissed off about the situation and felt like no matter what I had voiced to my first sergeants and my commanders at the time, nothing was going to change. So Twitter being as new as it was, I was just like, right. let me just tag. I didn't know that was going to happen. I didn't. But now with the with the 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 maybe it's the hindsight and even the foresight of what this thing is, I still come out on the side of that no fucking E5, E6, E4, whatever, E9 for that matter, should be able to just go on Twitter and fucking at a goddamn three star. That is not what our fucking army was set up to do. Right, right. But had you not posted that shit? Because see now, had I not, man, you know what? What would I have done? I'd have just fucking sucked it up for the summer, right? Because that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, that's what would have happened. Right. Well, I would have had a choice. You and had I still a choice. had to suck it up and clean for twelve hours the next day. But it's now, not like now, I ultimately now look benefited. At now. But now look at you now. You're a little bit older. You're getting more wiser in your age, and then you're like saying. Fuck them kids. I'm gonna tweet this. <laughs> yeah, <fuck them> kids. <laughs> <laughs> you do it right. You're like, because yeah. in, in a way, it's like it's it's like a it's like a well, I, I do say this to every soldier I've ever had, and even to the ones coming in now, I will always say this: if you feel the worst thing or the if you feel the best case scenario for you is to go scorched earth, then by all fucking means do it. Well, and and, and for that's an individual decision. For legit shit, though, not for fucking yeah, not fight. because you know I yelled at you because you're I out of fucking you. uniform, or yeah, or you showed up <laughs> for formation and all this. But stuff. actually, I would like for you to do that because I want you to know how it works both ways. Because <laughs> someone's going to tell you to fucking show up in the formation in the right uniform. That's what they'll so, tell you. Or, or, or someone's <laughs> not going to just take your shit and just to, you know, a lot of the, everyone everyone gets mad 
uh, you know, we will, we'll get a couple comments. Uh, we'll get a couple inbox stuff and, and it'll, it'll be like that. It's like my, I was told to be here and be there. And I showed up five limits, minutes late. I'm like, yeah, well you're, you're, then you're five minutes late. You're, yeah, good. you're fucking you're, five minutes late. You're five minutes late. It's not illegal, dude. He's it, it, it's, it's, it's not WTF worthy. Well, you always post other bullshit. Isn't you know? that where, but do you see like, isn't that kind of how we're trending? Isn't that the, like, yes. think about it. The, you yes. came in 89. I came in in 02. Like, Yes, it, you it's never it, no. considered like, and we're, we have a a, a gen. Maybe, I want to know if it's a generation yet, but we have examples like that who are just they've never been expected to be held to account for specific things like time, appearance, whatever. And now when they're doing it, they feel like they're being wrong. Like, no, actually, there's that fucking standard you're refusing to either adhere to or you just are not adhering to, I, and you feel like somehow you're being wronged without recognizing that that's the fucking standard you signed up for. Everybody knows that that standard exists and you're getting mad because the standard finally is enforced. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, there's some units and that, that's what makes me mad is, is we'll see some of that traffic. We'll see somebody coming in. Uh, and, and it is a, it is a, um, how do I say this? It, it is one of those expectations that, that you expect to join in the army. Like when I joined the army, I knew that there was going to be some sort of rigid system. Yeah. I just expect it would be hard. That's the only thing I expected. I expected some of that stuff. I expected to be at a formation. I expected yep. to be having my boots polished and my uniform start. It was an expectation that you were coming into. Um, and I don't want to sound like a boomer and go, oh, you know, <laughs> back in my day, back in my day, back in brag, back in brag. you know, I, I, didn't, <laughs> I don't want to say that, but, it, 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 there, there was there. I just imagine if WTF moments existed in the eighties, or oh, yeah. you know, or, yeah. and, and oh, my two stars make me shine my boots. Well, it, it's kind of like, well, the standard is the standard is brushed, <laughs> not spit shined. You know what I mean? So it, there, there's, yeah. there's well, we have that, we have time we need to fill. That's why you did it. Right? Yeah, we have. Yeah, there's <laughs> no, there, there's people that will pick pepper out of fly shit on stuff for us too. And we're like. You guys just don't want to poke stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, Jesus fucking Christ, guys, man, just, just don't. No, the, if you're supposed to be at this time and SP was at this time, you didn't show up to formation and you miss SP. That's a big issue. You know what I mean? What unit are you in? Oh, I'm in a, I'm in a, uh, I'm in a blankly blank unit and blankety blank this. I'm like, oh my god, dude. Yeah, well, of course, if their mission is to be like, I don't know, like a striker brigade, and they're supposed to be mobile and they're supposed to be hitting SPs, you kind of have to be there. Like why would that be even something they would complain about though is what's kind well, of weird to me that's where know, i'm kind of maybe that's my disconnect it's you like, know the, you know the you know the honestly stuff I'll, I'll be honest with you is like i think that <sighs> look at the rona look well, at look that's at, where i was going to transition but now that you're here yeah look, look at the rona we have had we had leaders talking about well Look, we could telework now. We could do this. We could do that. Now we have a whole bunch of courses of actions that we could do because we could telework now. We have proven for the last two years that we could telework and we could do this and do that. And then as soon as fucking, as soon as a soldier's wife gets sick or, 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 or a kid gets sick, you better activate the family care plan. Motherfucker, weren't you just like, I don't know, 18 months ago <laughs> tweeting about how core, how using telework is the best way to go. And this is going to help the army out and it'll be best for the soldiers. And now you're saying that you, this person, this person needs to be fried for, you know, family care plan, which that, that whole thing, the army married couples program and, and, and the family care plan, uh, regular, that all needs, that needs to get fucking dumped, dude. It, it our leaders our our leaders now. And I'll, they, they, Look what they did, and we posted on WTF Moments. Look what they did for the ACFT or PT test during COVID, and look what happened there. They couldn't even roll that shit out right. So that whole thing just nope. needs a whole fucking look. Went away for an entire year. Yeah. Oh, and we are we still going to have the ACFT? They're not. I mean, are we? Uh, well, I just wrote a few NCOARs that again, no ace, no no PT test was given in accordance with whatever that fucking Good. Rule was. Um, Good. Yeah, yeah no, you should, that's, that's, that's exactly what it's split because you have big stars out there, bro, right now that are actually using that for like rack and stack for PME that are actually using that for, and we've, we've had people come back and say, Oh, is this according to the regulation? And you're like, dude, are you really putting down an ACFT score when we do not, it's not even a test yet. It's not even a, it's not even passed. So a lot of the stuff that we've had is we've had, We've had leaders come into our inbox complaining about what their soldiers are not doing for the ACFT. And we have to kind of correct them going, dude, you can't do that, man. Yeah. 
but that's my biggest thing with that is like how is that not known at this point like the, the, we go all the way back to you know sergeant ramos trying to find a fucking unit in kosovo and you know what you put the individual effort to figure that shit out and here we are at the most technologically advanced time in our society in our military everyone's got these fucking devices that have everything in human history on them <clears throat> everyone has a fucking computer everyone's got an internet connection and we still can't coordinate that we can't we, we can't, can't do it and it's all happened groups. within it's happened within my career man I told you, I joined in 2002, right? Where AKO was still coming online. Like every sergeant's time was still like, you went out fucking side and you learned some shit with your sergeants. Hip pocket like, stuff, yeah. Yeah. And, and now we've devolved into, well, I haven't seen an email on that. I haven't got a phone call. Like what? I think technology, I think, <laughs> I think for, I think for the COVID stuff, I think for, for some of the stuff that we did for 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 fighting the Rona and all that. Yeah. Um, I, I think we were we were so off the mark, except for Eighth Army, because they really did a good job on the peninsula for what they did for their COVID mitigation shit. And what they do? Well, that there were more if you some of the posts that we had, they were they were they were on top of it when it came to what where's they, eighth army for those who have no oh, Korea. I'm sorry, okay, eighth okay, army is in Korea. All right, got it. Literally, literally, literally now, the, were they following Korean guidance or were they doing their own? Well, they were doing both. They were following okay. Korean guidance and then adding uh, adding a little bit to it for, for yeah. the mitigate mitigation. I think it's the gold standard for how they did it, but for some reason over here we're just like two left feet. Matt Damon, we just we just stumbled about that. I, I still don't get how. I mean, it's so fucking and, weird, right? Like, and, you know, and then we had the choice to take it, and then we didn't have the choice to take it. And then you had leaders that were not going back to social media. Oh. Yeah, leaders on social media that were saying, if you didn't get the vax, this is when it was a choice, then you're not a real leader. And you're thinking, did you yeah. just? Yeah, you, it's a fucking choice, dude. Did you really just fucking say that? It's almost like it's almost like our current president, right? Now. Well, well I, that's it. Can he? Is he a year now? Can we just shit talk about? Can we just talk about? Shit you can do whatever you want, man. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's almost like how could you sit there and say you're you're trying to 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 support the soldier and all stuff? It's almost like the president and the citizens. He just said today. He just said today that uh, minor action within the Ukraine right is, is not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Yeah, it's not it's not big. It's not a big deal. With minor incursions. Uh, who cares? Yeah, minor incursions. That's the and, oh, my what are we gonna fucking do? But oh. yeah. Not gonna do that tonight. Anyway, no, no, no that's, yeah, that's, we'll be here for another two fucking hours. I'm already at a half a bottle because we're fucking. <laughs> I think the first time the audience is like, "You really didn't fucking." You, I learned my stuff through through uh, you know wisdom of other individuals, but I do appreciate you, you know, coming. Yeah, here. no. Um, so I was gonna ask you about that though with COVID though, because uh, I, I as I always do, I I make some silly little fucking quote tweet on something, but I saw. <laughs> You know, a disclosed.tv tweet on the Israeli Defense Force. Literally Israel, the most vaccinated fucking country on this planet. <clears throat> 14,000 IDF soldiers infected currently at the moment. Right. And my joke was, you know, there's that meme for, I don't know, it's not really a meme form, but a way of tweeting or commenting for those who don't do any of this shit where you capitalize and, un, you know, non-capitalize a word to make you're, you're mocking something you're by mocking doing this exactly. right and so i was just like get the vaccine or get out right, like, right, well, right look hold on fourteen thousand idf strong all vaccinated all boosted and all covid still got all ronin and all ronin you know the, the, our joint chiefs and uh the yeah, they all got it fucking they the secretary of defense just got it two weeks ago like what where are we go and that's what i was going to ask you so maybe you can apply some big brain or, you know, harken back to your, your, your positions that you've held. But do you think like, especially with the UK announcing today that they're going to go away with all these fucking restrictions, they're going to do away with the vaccine passports because they're going to, they're going to start treating COVID like the flu. Like, do you, are, are we getting to that point? Do you think is that yes, next? Yes. I think we're, I think we're getting tired, but we're have we have agitators that are out there that want to continue it for their own gain for their own yeah. type of, you know, the, 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 I am not a, I'm not an epidemiologist. I'm not a biologist. I'm not a fucking scientist. I but do you know are a sergeant major. 
<laughs> Bro, I've, been reading, I've been reading years to be called can call me can uh, so, so my, my thing my thing is that is that the same individuals that are crying about what like let's just talk about joe rogan then fuck it what he said yeah. about how to, there's like over 200 doctors who who want to take him off of spotify or whatever just for asking fucking questions he didn't now mind you now joe rogan got corrected on air and joe rogan yeah. had the sack to admit it that he yeah got he admitted he's like oh shit you're right oh, shit, i was wrong bad. and i you're was right. glad I was that wrong. this guy was the fucking one that co- correct right me. right so everyone it's not like accountability he's, imagine yeah, that he can practice that well. right come to find out that the majority of the 200 individuals are not epidemiologists not fucking virologists not it, they're all in so agenda driven weird man this fucking fear porn of the shit pisses me off bro so i honestly wanted zombies to happen but you know I mean, if you want zombies to happen, please just come to California. I'll take you to San Francisco. <laughs> I can show you some fucking zombies, man. There's, I saw a dude the other. Where did I see this dude? Where was I just? Dra- oh, Vallejo. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I like I said, I. And uh, this motherfucker was straight out of The Walking Dead. Kansas City, Kansas City. Uh, was a couple weeks ago. I was in. I was in uh, Aurora. A few weeks ago, I was in Aurora, Colorado. Um, it. Bad bro, there. Well, yeah. I guess got, Colorado. They, they, yeah, they got, I, I was in Denver a year and a half ago. I guess. Well, last December twenty twenty, I was in Denver. Yeah. Same thing, man. They got. They got. They got the zombies out there that that are freaking. Uh, and also, we have political zombies that want to continue to say, no. Look, dude. Didn't I just see you tweet about a year ago about being like a writer or talking about some fan fiction about bullshit? Now you think you know everything about COVID? Yeah. It, uh, see, that's what you were saying. So. Why do you think there's there's still people within our our political spectrum that are pushing all of the the lockdowns, the mandates, the masks, all this shit? When you know evidence more and more each day comes out to kind of not really support it, and I think that's where the UK is moving to, and maybe they'll be kind of a, a you know a precursor to other nations or other countries that follow suit, but. Even in our own country, you have we don't have we're not in consensus on it, right? We have states that are doing the know. exact opposite of others. There's no real difference in case numbers or any of that shit. So, like, what what do you think? What is what is your big picture view on my why? big picture view for us and why we're like this? Is there's a lot yeah. of, there's a lot of individuals that gain from it. Like I said, the fear porn is what is gaining a lot, and there's there's. You know, you, you have the fear porn individuals to keep others down, but you have the fear porn individuals that said it was okay for all the riots to happen a year ago. Yeah, jeez. You know what I mean? There was, and it was okay. Which, that, you, you know, know, like I talked with Lee, that's been remarkably silent over the last year. Kind of I would like to know what the statuses are for those. No, pretty I'm not convenient. saying. Well, no, he was right. It's pretty convenient, you know, post-election 2020. Post, it's post-election been 2020, I'll be honest with you. I'm all about <laughs> supporting causes. Everybody knows Black Lives Matter. I support support some of whatever the causes you want to do to to advance the right of individuals who are who are of, of oppressed oppressed uh you know backgrounds i got no pro- i really don't have a problem because you know some days or someday i should say there will be some protests from individuals that i might not agree with or right but it's their freedom of speech to do it their right to assembly i, I that doesn't bother me whatsoever yeah. but i want to know what the sta- i want to know what the stats are of those events of individuals did they get COVID? are you including numbers because you know you brought up a good point now they're saying now they're adjusting statistics to where people who are in the hospital of COVID and shit, yeah. or, or having COVID or COVID or because of COVID. you know yeah. what i mean yeah so and i i broadcasted earlier i lost a family member to COVID because everyone says no there's no there's no everyone can get a vax that's fucking bullshit you'll get fucking triage i had a, fam, a family member uh, lost to COVID and, and, and he was, he had all the comorbidities and all that. And before he could get vaxxed, he caught it and, and, and he died of it. And what pisses me off is that we text back and forth asking me about, should he get the vax or not vax or whatever? And he even said, I'm waiting to get the vax. I'm waiting to get it. Knew that it was going to happen. And then he caught it. And then that was it. And that, that's what pisses me off about this whole fucking thing. So when somebody comes off and says, Everybody can get it. It's easy access. Oh, no, it's bullshit. You're driving the fucking goalposts even further and further because now you're saying people have to wear a fucking mask and now we have to do tests. Now we have to have a, a system to yeah. where you have to log in, drop your address in, and you get four. four yeah, we've got a weird masks. fascination going on right now with testing. And, and, and that's, that's what, another thing. What does First, that do for you? Okay, so you're negative or you're positive. It's like right. I, I, I jokingly tweeted earlier, I think it was maybe last week, it was like, you know, there used to be this 
<clears throat> like this feeling like, oh my, this feeling of, oh my God, I've got COVID. So now it's like, oh my God, I've got it. Great. Now I, I got it out of the way. Right. It used to be very negative and like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. And now it's just like, oh, it's a sense of relief. I finally got it. Well, and, and no one wants to take an account that individuals now, now think about this for, for, for a while, individuals who are considered essential personnel, right? Mm-hmm. We're exposed to the virus. We're exposed to oh, shit. every day, every day. We've had nurses, we've had doctors, we've had EMTs, we have police officers, we had people out there working construction and also this stuff. They were exposed to it. They got it and they had the antibodies for it. Yep. These same individuals that asked that were asked to be essential workers at their place of employment are now being told that they got to get vaxxed because they, or because they, they, they just got to get vaxxed. And we're like, wait a minute, I got it. I have the antibody. Make it make, oh. it make sense, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so my, my personal thing is that um, like you were saying how the UK is doing it. I would, I think that it should go and, and Hey, you know what? Just like everybody else who isn't qualified to shit talk about it. I want, I'm not qualified to shit talk it either. And here's yep. my thing. I think you should, it's a choice. I think if you don't get it, if you don't get the vax, you don't get the vax. I think that if you have, if your doctor, it was between you and your doctor and you say specifically, and I mind you, I'm as a civilian, not as a military person. And I say, your doctor says you need to get the vax, then get the vax. I'll obviously advise your doctor. But if you're fucking healthy and you have all this other shit and your doctor says, no, you shouldn't get it or whatever. There are doctors out there that are saying they shouldn't get it. I mean, you're right. It's become to the point to where you can't even discuss anything about COVID without it being, being a, a vaccine. Problem. Well, and that was the thing, like with with Dr. McCullough, who was on Joe Rogan, and I've talked about this a few times. And you know, I, I've, I've shared it with my mom. My mom, my mom's a retired nurse, but she's she's always been on the kind of the forefront of a lot of stuff, especially throughout our family history. Like she she goes above and beyond to to research and find out shit for anything anybody's going through and she she's been at the forefront of a lot of this stuff um but th- th- what comes out with dr mccullough and what she said very go- early on going on because her and my dad caught it back in july of 2020 um and you know when we go back to the commodity thing like when my dad caught that my dad is the epitome of someone who shouldn't have survived multiple heart surgeries awful immune system just you know, when they, they, when they caught it and they told me they caught it, I was like, if this is as bad as they say, my dad's not going to make it. Right. He's just not exactly. right. He's fine. They were tired for two weeks, give or take. Right. But I'm not discounting it because I know someone, I, I know, uh, I, the one of the, so my last deployment, uh, Sergeant Zambrano, he died from it. 35 years old, 36, maybe 36 years old. Don't know how he died. Don't know why perfectly healthy, super fit, super vain, like very, like an individual who always constantly took care of himself, ate, right, right, worked out. Right. Uh, but yeah, he died from it. Don't know why. Yeah. Um, but my point is that from the very beginning, and I think you just kind of hit on it as well. And Dr. McCullough touches on this with the, on his appearance with Joe Rogan is like, there's never been this focus on preventing hospitalizations, right? Treatment being proactive and he couldn't understand why and you know this goes on for three hours in his podcast but rogan presses on him presses it presses him on it later and he talks about and this may be a good point i don't know but dr mccullough someone who is vaxxed and boosted as well despite all that says like you know what people affix this label to doctors that maybe isn't really well deserved and you know we're not the MMA fighter like you, Joe Rogan, we're not somebody who runs, you know, into the face of adversity or whatever. We're fucking doctors. We, we're not people who are hard charging in the face of fear or adversity. Like we're just trying to figure shit out. Like, so, I mean, kinda, I'm, you know, I'm talking about how you're talking about gaining and stuff like that. I'm kind of, I'm, I don't, after all this fucking shit ends, I don't want to see a fucking doctor speak from here on out, dude, because it, it's gotten to the point where it's, it's wore me down. You've had doctors on CNN. You've had doctors on MSNBC. You have doctors on fucking just 
on their own fucking tweets. You had doctors uh, speak on other stuff. They've all had different approaches to how fucking COVID happened. And now we're back to the original. You need to wear an N95 mask. Well, we were told not to wear one at the beginning of it. Yeah, those fucking things don't do anything. Yeah, right, right, right. Exactly. So I so, can fog my glasses up or my sunglasses. <laughs> I, they, come on. They, it, the fucking, just, it, it just doesn't work. It's just, it's just, and then of course, the back and forth with Fauci, <laughs> the back and forth with the CDC, the foot flopping with the, the, the CDC guidance. I just kind of look at, look, You've lost your fucking narrative. You're 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 fucking you're you're failing at this. Yeah. Um, and now you want me to now you want me to go ahead and put my name in a database for 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 tests. Ordering a test. Yeah. Why do I need why do I need to do a test? You know. Let me, let me That's a some, good point for those who are tinfoil aren't. shit. Let me get some tinfoil shit going on here. I don't yeah, do me, it. I don't What's up, me, Alex Jones? Jones? Yeah, exactly, Alex Jones. Let me tell you why you should not be doing this. Anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> Alex Jones, that dude. Woof. Anyways. If, if it's that fucking easy to put your name in for four fucking tests, for four for, for names for tests, then what do you think is going to happen when it comes to votes? What's next? That's my tinfoil thing. Damn, that's some tinfoil stuff. That's, that's some tinfoil shit. That's well, especially tinfoil. when the president today just said, like, hey, if we don't pass this, how can we ensure that these elections are legitimate? Right. It sounds almost like he's. Did saying, you know you can't vote? You are not a white man. You are a I'm man. Not, you are a man of color. Did you know you're not? Did you know you all can't years, vote? In all the years of voting since Ross Perot, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Right now, <laughs> oh, actually, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now that uh, that 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 <laughs> I have had never had my hands tied, have not been bound, or have not had anybody uh, over me. What? So, you better not. You no. can't, or you do this. Every opportunity, it's almost like the VA, all right? The reason why some, <laughs> this is what pisses me off, it's, it's a cast 22 of the VA. Yes, the VA isn't perfect, but the VA also has specific instructions to get the veterans that veterans get pissed off about. Well, did you fill this out? Well, no. Well, the vet, well, the VA said that if you don't fill this out, you don't get the benefits. Well, I did, but that, I think it's stupid. Well, you kind of have to fill this out. <laughs> do this. That's the same thing I feel about the, the, the voting thing. If you don't get your ass up in the morning to go fucking vote, and I as a Latino, not Latinx, um, <laughs> I as a Latino have Is had Latinx every- or Latinx. I don't know. Yeah, I thought, I know. When I heard Latinx, I was like, it's Kleenex fucking coming out with some <laughs> type of brand or some shit. Um, but my thing is that I, I didn't, I have had never had as a Latino have had anybody go against me or, or say that I cannot vote. Um, they're just like, specific- are you sure? I'm not telling you, man. I voted for all of them. I mean, no, because I, I mean, the way I'm told, like only I'm allowed to vote because I'm a white man. Yeah, white. W H Y T E. Oh, you I, white people. Well, I'm gonna say this then. You white, white. People, you white people are fucking up if Latinos like me are voting. I'm just saying. <laughs> I got to I'm vote. Gonna, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna look into this. I'm gonna call the white czar and see yeah. if there's something I can out. do. Yeah, I need to find out. Talk, <laughs> call the white czar and the Latinx czar. And, and the Latinx czar. We need to fucking. Because I know I know this is bullshit. When I see this, every time I see about the voting stuff and all, you know, our Latinx group, which Nikki Freed, the commissioner, agricultural commissioner for Florida, is trying to run yep. against Atlantis. <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, a that's a losing proposition. And, and, and immediately she was on the on the Latinx side. Of course she is. It's all like, it's all identity politics. That's all the Democrats in Florida do. They and, all they and, do is try and attach themselves to one group. That, and it, as soon as it and Florida as as politics it, is so bad. It's so I bad. love it. It's I love fucking it's, awful. As a psyoper though, I, I, all this. Shit's I know, like, but it's so predictable and bad like they, it's not a winning proposition it's just no. awful like i don't know why First they keep off, doubling they've been doubling down on this shit since the tea party right it's, oh don't even start on the fucking <laughs> where the fuck are they at you know what i mean all of a sudden shit no i'll yeah. tell you where they're at we still got three senators that haven't done a fucking thing since they got elected cruz oh, uh cruz. what's that fucker's name Rand paul who's the third one that mother who's the other one all of them dude are no right. rubio Rubio, yeah. All right. Rubio's done a few things for Florida, but for the most part, those are the three most prominent senators to be elected from the Tea Party movement. You know what the, all three of them really? have done? They've all three lost fucking nominations for president. But they have, They've but, all ran and nothing's happened. Think about it, though. Did, 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 when, when Nikki Fried, is it Fried or Freed? I, I let's I go with Fried. I think Fried's good. Fried. So Nikki Fried, Nikki Fried was for a while pushing the Latinx fucking narrative forever in a fucking day until she saw the stats tank. And then a Pew Research Group says specific Latinos, they had that color chart. Like, like, like Latinos 
from this don't uh, from this darker shade don't relate to the ones from the wider shade i'm thinking what are you fucking talking about <laughs> and so when nikki fried had all this latina latinx latinx shit going on in her under campaign shit and then saw that the polls were tanking after the loss in virginia then all of a sudden she scrubbed her entire social media really all the tink shit yeah go ahead and look up nikki fried and then type in latinx you won't find anything on twitter however a lot of her <laughs> proclamations for hispanic heritage month a lot of her proclamations for what, what she thinks Latinx should be doing. Um, that, that's where she has the, the, the Latinx thing. With the Latinx thing, man, I'm going to tell you what. White people, stop. Just, this just is psyop shit right here. This, this, is, is, just, this is just, just stop. But Latinos don't appreciate Latinx. We don't want to hear fucking Latinx. If I were to say, if my grandfather was still alive, uh, you know, who fought in the Mexican Revolution on the other side, he would have fucking said, what the fuck is this Latinx shit? <laughs> <laughs> He'd be like... Is the pinchy Latin Latin get Latin equis? Nuevo cerveza? Guess you think it's like a new fucking beer? It's like Corona. Corona is like the Latin X of fucking Mexican beer type shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, all right. I got one question for you. Then we'll, for we'll let you get out of here and we'll go, go for supply it. ourselves. All right. So uh, I, I mentioned the UK and hopefully the US follows suit. But where do you you know with with the Joint Chiefs and the Secretary of Defense coming down with this stuff? Where do you think this is going to go with Department of Defense in terms of pushing vaccination, boosting, all that shit. Because at this point, boosting still hasn't been required. But correct, correct. Boosting, boosting has not been required. Aside from the, there was a, a DOD state uh, memorandum release. I think it was like, um, what was it? After a certain amount of time or something like that. A I, year. I, a year. One, yeah. Yeah. So, so the, so the requirements of, I, I think that the, that the vaccination, like when I deployed to Africa. I didn't yeah, realize big list. I, I mean, I did not know there was, a, I didn't know there was an extra checklist to your already med pro shit. <laughs> it, it, like here's med pros. And then there's you going to the horn of Africa. Yep. You know, you, you, you kick, you kick the dirt and AIDS is, is in the fucking dust. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so I, I, again, I was like, you gotta get this shot, this shot, this shot, this shot, this shot. So for a redness issue for an initial, whatever, I would see it as another, another, another shot. I, I would, I wouldn't, Mind you, now there's I guess there's some uh, there's some studies coming out where I guess the vaccine and some individuals are, are having some heart issues or something. Myocarditis, yeah, yeah myocarditis. Um, I, I think that then then that's when it's that, happening in like healthy individuals. Like there's right. all this shit soccer going on players, in soccer players guys. in Europe, right? Yep. There was just a, a story I read like two weeks ago. This 24 year old and 29 year old pro soccer player just died from it. Yeah, there's like just like drive fucking weird, like, man. That's fucking weird. Don't it's you like drop dead, like collapsed after fucking like soccer. I would say yeah. soccer players are probably the most as in terms of sports outside of the United States, as opposed to you know, I think our only cardio equivalent would be the NBA, and I don't think yes. they work as hard as soccer players. Yeah, I I think I think I think you're right. I think you're we haven't had any players. issue. Well, I think there was one NBA player that I can remember, but for the most part, there hasn't been any issue with them. But yeah, don't you think it's kind of weird that like pro it soccer is. players in their twenties are just fucking yeah, dropping is. dead? It is, and, and and there's nothing. Here's what pisses me off though, bro. It, you asking that question, our TL is going to be filled with. Oh yeah, no, oh, I, 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 I this, this fuck it. When I post this, I'm gonna I'm gonna purposely mention that we talk about myocarditis. I just want to see how yeah. quickly it gets yeah. removed. Because <laughs> we talk three hours of shit, but I'm going to yeah. purposely mention that we talk myocarditis from the vaccine just to see right. what happens. Exactly. <laughs> and then, I'll re- then I'll repost it with nice words that Twitter yeah. likes. Yeah, and, and we and, and how we both love, uh, you know, we support fucking Lafayette Lee and and hang yeah, out. and I, and I love the vaccine and I felt great when I got it. It was great. <laughs> it was amazing. Loved it. <laughs> oh man, this is fucking awesome, dude! I can't yeah. wait to see here. All right, man. Well, that is Mr. Kenneth Ramos. He is from the. U.S. Army, what the fuck moments. He is the Grand Admiral of Propaganda. He is a retired Sergeant Major. He's done a lot more shit than you and I have done. And he's pretty fucking cool at the same time. If you don't think he is, don't worry. He's a Latinx, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, he's Latinx. All right. Uh, So where can those at home follow you, find you on the internet, on the podcast? Oh, wow. You can podcast. On Twitter, you could find me at um, the IO guy, which is the information operations guy, because I yep. am the IO guy. All right. IO guy, the IO guy on Twitter, and then of course at U.S. Army WTF Moments 
uh, uh, on, on Facebook at WTF nation radio with my podcast on Mondays and Thursdays. We also have shows, uh, you know, four times a week. And then, um, also the WTF nation radio, uh, Twitter and WTF nation radio Twitter. I mean, I mean, uh, YouTube we have, I mean, just look up, just go on Google and go WTF nation radio. And then find uh, him. You can go find the guy with that pass in the background. Yep. 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 So, right. so yeah, uh, well, with everything you've done, of course, I appreciate you coming on, but also thank you for everything you did do for this goddamn great nation. No, oh, it's you too, brother. All right. But just make sure you have your vaccine passport. All right. Cause <laughs> I will not hang up. No. <laughs> all right. There will be bourbon. That's Eric Kenneth Berman. Ramos. Find him. Go That's Eric. Him and we'll have this uploaded soon. All right. Let me pause this.